Good morning and welcome back to day three of Hackasat here at DEF CON CTF 30. Let's get right into it. Not Hackasat. I said, I did it. I <laughs> did it. I was so afraid I was going to do it. Welcome back to live CTF. <laughs> Listen, we're going to edit that on the, on the VOD. <laughs> we're going to change it. Welcome back. Let's no, we start over. Welcome back to live CTF here at DEF CON CTF finals, DEF CON 30. Let's get right into it. Let's let the teams get going for the semifinal round. Five, Five four, four, three. three. Two, one, one go! go. Alright, uh, so uh, as you can see, uh, we are starting to get a little bit tired here as we get towards the end of the it's been a long competition. Weekend. But we are down to the semifinals, uh, so we're going to have two semifinals today and then the grand finals. And uh, these are important matches, like looking at the current scoreboard of the DEFCON CTF, these points will affect the final standings. Yes, absolutely. Like, we're at the point where the, both the point totals are going up, the amount that teams are getting for making it further into live CTF, and the teams that are here are all teams in the top half of the scoreboard, and so this this mm. can change things. Mm, it really yeah, can. Definitely. Let's just uh, take a quick look at each of the teams and see what they're doing. Uh, starting over here with uh, uh, MMM, um, pulling up Ghidra. Was that? Uh, 
what they were using uh, in the previous matches? I don't remember. Well, so they've changed their players uh, okay. before. Right. So it's it's. I think Jimbo was using Ida, but um, yeah, Ida on Windows. Yes, yes. But we may have had uh, uh, Geeter before from uh, from Robert. So I'm not I'm not sure. But right. Uh, yeah, let's uh, check with uh, Starbucks. Yeah, uh, we can see a bit of a uh, terminal starting a Python. Let's go ahead and, and, and tell everybody the name of the challenge, kind of the information on this one. This right. is called AES of Spades, Ace yeah. of Spades, because because really that's what it's all about, right? Like it's it's very important that you get the good name, the good pun. Yes. And then you figure out how to make a challenge out of right. it. Right. And I originally made this challenge, or like I started making this yep. challenge. Yep. Uh, and it was like in a mem it's messy state. And then uh, Josh yep. uh, came in and kind of like uh, salvaged it and, and like turned it into something that we see here today. So I don't really know what the challenge is about, except that as the You know what it was about originally? Yes, yes. And it's changed, and so we're going to find out too. Right. I mean, it does involve AES encryption. Uh, like that's, yep. that's definitely still there. We can see if we switch over to MMM's... Um, the compilation here, you can see that AES128 uh, in it and AES128 uh, encrypt. So there is some kind of AES encryption um, uh, thing going on here. Um, so they are uh, they are doing um, um, a little bit of um, you know uh, decompilation, trying to name the variables, making sense of the pro what the program is doing. Uh, so we've been told that basically. Um, it's uh, AES encryption, like it's an arbitrary write dressed up uh, with some AES encryption. That's basically uh, what, what the challenge is about. Um, if we <coughs> switch over to um, Starbucks again, we can see that they are doing some, uh, using an online disassembler. I thought that was a little unusual. I, yeah, I was yes. a little surprised by that too. Um, so they are, I'm not entirely sure, they are like, Verifying a couple of oh they're doing some calculation with some offsets. Just want to look at some maybe some opcodes. Um, yeah. Oh they oh they're writing a little piece of writing a little piece of shell code, right? Yeah, you can see. Uh, the, yeah, so they're putting together a small piece of shell code. Uh, oh and man, they really need to learn binges. Binge. This is what binge is really good at. Mm. I'm trying not to do it too much, but I have to. I have to. This is exactly the kind of thing it works really well for. Yeah. You can stay right in the one uh, the one app. But yeah, it's so building up their payload using an online disassembler, online assembler rather. Yeah. And oh, there we go. We got a brief little glance at the source code, and they're off again. So this is uh, interesting because we can see that, uh, in contrast to MMM, who w went like uh, started more like analyzing the code. Right. They went straight into putting together some kind of payload. Um, you can see here their exploit scripts um, being put together. There's some and shell code there that has been assembled. And I'm not entirely sure what the shotgun was doing. I saw that it was... Um, uh, it looked like a pointer address. The, it was using some kind of pointer within the program. And there was a syscall in there. Uh, maybe changing memory protections? Um, well, it says it's it's code and it looks like they're dropping... I mean... Right, so it could be, you know, an mprotect plus shell code, right? Yeah. Yeah, but the, the thing they have labeled code looked like it had a... Is that a pointer? Um, mm -hmm. No, we'll see. I think it is. If yeah. we do switch over to... MMM, we see that they've also started um, uh, putting together uh, an exploit uh, script here. You can see they have this uh, calculate key uh, function. Uh, and uh, so I guess that uh, they, in this uh, program, your uh, um, resulting payload it could be like the result of the encryption. Uh, so I, I mean, I will say, watching, watching Starbucks, like, I. It looks like they know what they're doing. They certainly uh, are making um, making an attempt to uh, to the, they're they're XORing the uh, the IV with uh, their shell code. Oh, okay. So like, uh, I'm not sure. That sure sounds like a thing that that would be useful. Yeah. Yeah. So here, okay. So the payload is the IV. Oh, interesting. Okay. So the 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 IV that's used for the encryption is part of the payload. And so actually that makes a lot of sense. We're seeing them XOR that in. Yeah. Yeah, they saw that very, very quickly. Certainly uh, faster than we could follow along as they as they looked at it. It makes sense though. These are our our, um, uh, our top uh, our top teams. Oh, so actually that, where did that? Oh, okay, so that was memory. That was a piece of memory that they pulled out of the binary and they're XORing that with the code, which is the, the IV. Oh, okay, that's interesting. 
But it's it's actually interesting to see now. So they are looking now in the debugger. I guess they are uh, now testing out their uh, payload to see if it is working. Uh, so this could be this could be a quick one. Um, yeah, could if, really if, be. Like I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly how many steps there are to this, but you know, if we're already seeing some shell code being thrown in there, uh, there might not be uh, too many steps involved here uh, at all. Uh, if we switch over back to uh, MMM, we can see that they also they have this calculation function. They put a bunch of like A's and B's in there, and from that they're calculating a key and an IV. Um, and we can see they're starting to put together the interaction to send this key, send the IV, uh, receiving an address. There's maybe so like a leak, like an intentional thing. We would just give them something there. Yeah, uh, and I don't, I don't see them in yet creating that key. So if I'm mean, looking at this now, it looks like Starbucks is a little bit ahead just based on how they've already got the memory address pulled out. They're XORing it with the IV, which is their code. Right. So I'm seeing that, uh, that looks certainly further along. But, yeah. and, and we did see Starbucks show up earlier into that payload and start it. That said, I would say that the first person to start writing their payload script has not been an indicator of success. No. Right? It's been sometimes slow and steady wins the race, and sometimes quick to get your script out does, and so it's right. not, not been consistent. We saw MMM here trying, testing their payload. I saw them like uh, connecting to a local uh, uh, setup um, of the challenge. Um, it. It was not a successful exploit, at least. That's all I know. It was hard to tell, like, to what extent it was, uh, you know, successful or not. Yeah, the further along we get in this competition, the more we need pause, <laughs> because these these players are so fast. That, yes. Uh, just trying to kind of keep up with them. Uh, we did right. see some of the classic AAs being put in on Starbucks just a second ago off off camera. Right. They're also checking uh, memory mappings. There was it or. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're searching for their values that they that they send in. Um. Right. So just uh, do quickly a, li a little bit recap of where we are in the tournament. This is one of the first semifinals between Starbucks and MMM, and then right after we will have the second uh, semifinals between Perfect Root and Wreck-A-Pig, and uh, you know the winners of those respective matches uh, go to the uh, finals. Yep. Um, and. Uh, these teams, I'm trying to look over a little bit at the scoreboard of the uh, of the, the main event, and uh, yeah, these are all in the top half at least of the scoreboard. Actually, I think Pig might might not be looking at that. It's it's really oh right, okay, so, yeah. So in yeah. order relative to one another on the top scoreboard, um, MMM is is in number one. Uh, but Perfect Root is in number uh, four. four. Yeah. And I would say they're within striking distance, right? So right. at four, they're about 4,000 points behind um, MMM. All, uh, actually, a little bit less. They're almost about 3,000. Right. And it depends, though. If, if MMM wins this, they've basically fended off any attack, even if they lose in the finals. I don't think anyone will be able to kind of close the gap uh, to them based on this event. No. Uh, but if they lose now... And Perfect Root ends up winning in the finals. Yeah, that could that's be. That's going to put it real close. It's going to put it very, very close, yes. and it will really depend on how they do in the main event. Right. Let's not forget uh, that, that they have like almost. Uh, well, it's like a couple of hours. Yeah, it's it's three, three and a half, half hours. hours this. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Left in the game here too. So uh, definitely a really exciting. Um, you know, it's it's always fun when. You know, uh, it's not the, the the competition is not decided until uh, like yeah, yeah. The, like the last. It could moment. go down to the wire. You yes. want it to you want it to be. I mean, as an organizer, you want it to be. As a player, you would love to win it early. And oh, uh, I mean, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Win it's it a like, blowout. You know, when you're playing a CTF, like you're, how many times have you not been thinking like, oh, can we just not like solve all challenges so I can go to bed, uh, and but yeah, that's not gonna happen in the Defcon CTF. Okay, yeah, so I'm seeing Starbucks over here is definitely continuing to tweak their uh, their script by pulling out their their uh, the pointers that they're, uh, the memory address that they're using. They're verifying that memory and updating the yeah. uh, the IV you that they're You can see a syscall being made there. Uh, and then they are trying to figure uh -oh. out what happens that afterwards. Uh, this might be it. Are we switching over to live? Oh, was, was, did it work? Uh, they look like they were... Tr it was... That's this. this is going to be... I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna be tight. I think both teams have pretty good progress on this. Um, so, yeah, no, they have some bad instruction there. There's something yeah, wrong. Yeah, there's a bug earlier. There's there. something there. wrong in their uh, in their exploits. Um, so, not there quite yet. They're going back to the assembler. 
Oh, they switched it to 64, oh, there was but a, they... There was a typo there. They missed a, they missed a, a zero at the end of, uh, oh, the end of an immediate okay. value. Yeah. And so it yeah. was shifted off, so the value was wrong. And this is the thing, like these, uh, That's the when little you're bug. working oh, is, with like, this uh, low-level stuff... Hold on, stuff hold on. Did they just switch? They just switched to throwing live. They went through it live. Are they going for it? Oh, they are typing. It's going fast. I'm just checking here. With oh, notes. no. They're... <clears throat> Oh, they're going, they're going. Oh, it did not work. Uh, no such port. Okay, here it is, yeah. here it is, here it is. Oh, typo, there yeah. it is. Starbucks, congratulations. Oh, yeah. Well done. Oh, my A God. super fast speed race. Well done on the challenge. Ace of spades. Congratulations to Starbucks, who makes it to our finals. <laughs> we'll see you back here for our next round.
and welcome back to our second semifinal round. I'm Cyphertex here with Zeta2. Hello. I introduced you, sorry. And uh, on the line, we also have Live Overflow. Hello, I'm back. Excellent. So we got a three commentator matchup today as we get closer and closer to the finals. Here, we're going to have uh, Perfect Root and Wreck a Pig. And let's just go ahead and count them down right away. Everybody. Right. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And we'll quickly switch over to the teams. They are, they are ready for this challenge. Yeah, we saw, uh, so they've been given the name of the challenge, uh, Loopy Brain, uh, which... Uh, and, and they were told it was an interpreter. All right. So where does that take us? I think also the menu is immediately uh, telling the teams <laughs> what, what this is about. Yeah. They, they definitely knew what sort of uh, uh, challenges was. In fact, we even saw one of the teams beforehand yes. where the web page opened with the spec right. uh, for that particular flavor of language. Uh, well, of language, both flavors of language, I guess. Right. I saw, um, I was also actually looking at one of the competitors' computers before the start, and they had, like, in their exploit uh, template, they already had, like, helper functions for uh, BrainFuck code. So, yeah, they are going, they're taking this seriously. So, so wait, did I get this correctly? You mentioned them the name, and they immediately knew it was about uh, BrainFuck yeah, before? Yes, they, they, had they no knew before they even showed up. They yes. were, like, they were ready. Uh, we've got. Oh, you told them like way in advance of the, the name so of the challenge? So we do tell every team the name of the challenge, yes, like an hour in advance, because we want them to send up oh, the right person. Okay, I didn't know. I think we had a problem with our with our stream capture. We may have been having some glitches there, but I think we got it all straightened out now. Yeah, it seems good, right, yes. A little bit of a visual artifact there, so if you're on the stream, we should now be up. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. Um, again, they know that it's an interpreter, they know that it's pwnable. And I think this is actually a category of challenge that's been around for a long time. In fact, we were looking and we realized that like uh, someone had actually written, a friend, friend of ours had written a version of this like nine years ago for another CTF that was a different challenge. Yes, but, but like, it has a lot of similarities. Very, very similar. Yeah, so we thought it was really funny. It's a, it's a, common, it's a common idea. I think like, difficulty-wise, since Carl, you wrote this, like, how would you rate this one relative to some of the other ones? So the uh, original version of this uh, was uh, kind of difficult, yeah. I would say. And then we uh, toned down the difficulty uh, a bit. Uh, so I would say it's still definitely not one of the easiest challenges we've had. Uh, but I hope it's not one of the most difficult ones either. I, I had a quick look at it uh, and immediately I thought, oh, that's going to be an easy challenge until I heard about uh, or noticed the little twist. Uh, that's in this this challenge that does make it a little bit more tricky. Well, yeah, go ahead and describe what you saw because I think we're, for the stream we're going to give them the uh, the pleasure of knowing what's going on even as the competitors are having to figure it out. Yeah, uh, maybe I should maybe mention what BrainFuck is. Um, it's an interpreted language that is working on symbols. Uh, you have like a, imagine a big uh, like a, a field or something and then you can move a cursor to the left, to the right, you can increment, you can decrement uh, a certain field. Um, and essentially, uh, here the like the the movement on this this big array um, is has no constraint, so you can have out of bounds reads and writes, and so it should be pretty easy to go out of bounds. And um, I, I I don't know if if that field is on the stack or um, no, it's in, it's, in the uh, it's on the stack. Yeah, so you should as you yeah. said, you like looking at it, you can just like oh, I'll just uh, increment the data pointer outside the bounds of the data or, uh, like data area into like the return pointer, and you're done, right? Right, and and that's what I thought. Oh, this is actually some. Th th they should figure this out very quickly, and it would be quickly done. And then it's just about the tooling to get the brainfuck program to manipulate the memory in the correct way. However, there's a size restriction right. uh, on on the brainfuck program, exactly. and that makes it significantly more difficult. Right. So so like a lot of exploits, right? You're in a constrained environment. You've got a small bit of shell code or a small payload. Uh, so what are you going to, to do with that? Yes. So, I so think, the, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the, the, the players are looking for something to uh, loosen their constraints. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, these things can get creative. There are many ways uh, how, how one could do that. Um, uh, maybe you can uh, change the, the accepted size. Yep. Maybe you find an interesting you know, maybe you can write, overwrite the return pointer and find a very useful a gadget in an in a interesting way. I mean, it, it's a limited brain fog program, but with some creativity, 
they could find some very interesting exploitation paths for this. It's a little similar to the Involunce challenge before, right? Where we actually had a, a, a simple command injection, except it was too few characters. And so they had to use one of the other vulnerabilities to make that the limit larger, and then they were able to use the, the original kind of Right, kinda design. a lot of similarities here. And I think uh, a key thing here is that the, the, data, the data array sits just after yep. the program array. That's, that's the key insight. When we see them naming like data and code and yeah. noticing they're adjacent to one another, that's yeah. going to be the point at which we know that they're on their way to, to figuring this well, out. If we look here at uh, Rika Pigs, who someone uh, says that it's how it's pronounced in the chat, uh, if that's correct. Thank yeah, you I'm not much. sure. I'm not sure exactly which which one it yeah, is. Yeah, we've been saying Rekka Pig throughout the tournament, but it it might be Rekka Pig because they're from the team Eureka. Um, that's uh, that sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah no, sounds I good. Sounds good. We'll go anyway, what I was going to say was that they saw that there's a win function in the program, so they yeah. don't need to do a full exploit chain like a ROP chain or something like this. They just need to take control of the instruction pointer and point it to the the win function. Yeah, yeah. There's there's uh, different things to make it easier, harder, and you know this one we already knew the challenge itself had enough difficulty with it that we wanted to make it a little bit easier once they had the ability to change a pointer, for example. Right. Well, and we way. also can see uh, the the interesting setup from uh, Rika Pick uh, with their with their interesting uh, Windows Seven VM with all the reversing yeah. tools. Yeah. Uh, not even full screening it, just like working in. I don't VM need. There, I like don't need this. the full resolution. I need two star bars are fine for me. I know. I, I I'm I'm impressed. It's like a, it feels like a little bit like a handicap. Like they're playing with the the, the difficulty set to high. Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, to just to, to flex. So just just switch over to uh, Perfect Root here. I see a lot of blue stuff on this screen. Yeah, so they've actually uh, opened up the file in Vim. So they're hex editing the challenge to what to change the, L, the, the oh. LD string. I don't think I've seen that before. It looked like they were changing. Like, oh, right. This. It might be uh, to make it easier to run the challenge uh, locally. Uh, oh, modifying it to like their version yeah, well, of the loader. Yeah, you can loader. see that yeah. seems to be running now. Uh, yeah. Did, so, so did they also have problems with the with the version? Yeah, I think it was the version of the loader uh, is different than the one on their box, and mm. instead of so we actually give the the loader with everyone. So you can one of the other teams demonstrated earlier, uh, which actually Komozo was even aware of that you can run the loader as an executable and then pass it to the argument of the the application and it will still run it, which is basically what the kernel does for you when you execute it. Um, but so instead of doing that. They just literally put a bunch of forward slashes into the, the, the raw string using Vim <laughs> where the reference to that, that library was so that it would use the local one that they had instead of uh, the one on our original system. Yeah. Um, I want to switch back over to uh, Rika Pig. Uh, you can see them running uh, the debugger here as well with the, with the challenge, and you can see a, a little bit there in the background. You can barely see it, but they have this script, and you can see all these like deck pointer, ink val, deck val, and so on. These are the the helper. Um, yeah, operations. Yes, and you can also see that they had a comment in the code with the dot slash submitter two. So they already have the the string, the thing they have to run yep. to win. Like so, they're you know they're trying to like make Optimize all the different as much as time possible. savings. Yes, they know that this. Can be tight since and, we are and like seconds well, have literally mattered. I, I was wondering what are the rules if one team is accidentally running submitter with the wrong team number? Then that result stands. So if you make the other team win, the other team wins. That's, yeah, we have oh, told okay. the teams. We this. did debate that, and we told them yeah. that that was going to be the way that we would do it. So be very, very careful with your. And uh, I will say, it's the risk isn't as bad as you might think. Only because each team, when they first connect to the server, um, they get a they choose their team, and it gives them their exact information. So most of the teams click their team name, and then just copy <laughs> and paste all the information from there. So right. haven't had anybody mess it up yet, but uh, no. yeah. yeah. My like my fear there would be that someone would like keep their template from like a previous match and then reuse it or yeah. something like this. Yeah. Maybe for next time we should have like not just one or two, like a small. We should a match small with the IP. global the global IDs of the. Like, yes. For example, every team has an ID on the DEFCON network as yes. well. Yes. Yes. Um, we should yeah. do. Uh, we should do something like Lesson that. Lesson learned for next year. Yeah. Yeah. There are, there are a lot of things we can uh, improve, but I think it's been running pretty smooth. Uh, this whole thing. Uh, I hope you've been uh, enjoying it. The people who have been watching, throughout the. Uh, weekend. So I haven't seen anybody yet figure out that that first constraint, right? I don't think I've seen anyone f um, get their way out of. Well, 
we can switch over here to um... it, it might be difficult to assess if they if they have seen it because it's like a mental note they would make themselves right right we would have to look at uh, when they start writing brain fuck uh, if they if they realize that they are constrained or not right and that's what what i wanted to point out here on perfect root screen uh so they tabbed away from it now but just when you switch it you can see that they had this small program with a loop and the input right, right there right, the p equals yes uh, you see the the comma is the input. It will uh, take it one byte input from standard input and write it to the current cell on the tape. And then the brackets are a loop. Uh, so they are uh, the kind of I think they're going to. You see the input in a loop thing uh, going on. So that's uh, definitely on the right track. Uh, though i think they want the greater than sign rather than the plus yeah. sign uh but uh, you know maybe they have another idea there are probably a lot of different solutions to this uh challenge but you need to escape that initial constraint yeah and and letting the letting it overwrite into the next uh into the next buffer and Correct. then getting the interpreter into that buffer right so there is, are is like the, probably the hard uh, like the main main that's the bug bug right. yes exactly so well there are essentially two bugs, right? Yep. It's the one that Live Overflow mentioned initially here, yep. that like, you can uh, uh, increment or decrement the data pointer outside, outside the of, data region. Right. Uh, but then to be able to have enough code to, to do that to in do the that. first place, right. you need to escape this like nine character program limit. And the way you can do that is you can actually get the uh, instruction pointer to jump into the data region. Um, so they're gonna, they're gonna stage up their shell code that's what we're looking to see. If we don't see that in the next five minutes or so, I think we're going to want to give them a hint on that one because we're going to want to see somebody with that second stage because they still have even more to the challenge even after that point. So we'll see the exact right. timing and we'll figure it out, but um, there's more work to do. So this one is, again, this was a little on the, the harder side, but it's also super interesting that they have to kind of like chain these things together. Yes. So we can uh, see here on uh, Rikipig's uh, the assembly, uh, you can see that they're looking at um, the uh, reading of the program, like the uh, when we're reading in the program, uh, they're looking to see if they can smuggle. For example, they saw that we're using this, the string length uh, function there uh, to maybe check if they can uh, smuggle uh, like null bytes or something into this. Uh, uh, yeah, not exactly sure where they're going there, but just looking more into the. You can see now they. This is they have the cursor, basically on half the bug there. You can say that the uh, loop uh, of the interpreter uh, keeps going mm -hmm. specifically until the per, uh, program counter. Usually, in a situation like this, you would have like a comparison be like program counter is less than the end, but in this case, it's program counter not equals that specific size. So if you manage to get the program counter larger than nine in Just this case, keep going. it yeah. will keep going. Yeah, so that's part of it, but then but then, how do you get it past it in the first right, place, right, right? right? So that's the other thing that they still have to find. Mm. I, I also just noticed that, um, I mean, I have seen the source code and I didn't quite uh, realize at the moment, but I'm seeing it here in the disassembly that the size is hard coded. So it's not a variable that they can easily yes. uh, change. So it is definitely a bit more tricky to escape that. I, in, in my mind, I, I thought they can change that limit in, from a variable st standpoint, but it's definitely hard coded. So it's right there as a um, as, as an actual value. Yep, immediate um, right in the, the, yep. the immediate, yeah. compilation. Yep. And uh, yeah, we can. Uh... That might be uh, quite tricky. So oh, oh they found uh... a bug here on Perfect Roots. Yes. Uh, so you yeah, can, uh, you that. saw there very sh briefly uh, in their small initial payload, you saw that they had an unmatched uh, opening loop bracket at the end of their code, and that is exactly the bug. So uh, if you have an unmatched bracket, the 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 subroutine that handles yeah. the the loop. It will, when it sees that initial uh, bracket, it will then keep searching forward. And it to doesn't find the stop at the maximum limit. Exactly, that it because that check is in the outer yeah. Yeah. loop. This is in like the subroutine to it's find the matching that particular bracket. bracket. Yeah. Yes, and it will just keep going until it finds a matching end bracket. So you need to first write a uh, right bracket into the data section and then have a left bracket in your code. And then the program counter will then and and just just to clarify when you say data section it, it is specifically the the 
buffer in memory that is for data. Right. I'm not this, talking yes, about the actual like data section that exists in no, the elf. No, right, I'm right, talking right, right. within the brain fuck context. Yes, we yes. have like the program and the data. <clears throat> Excellent. So yeah, so I would say perfect route. Well on their way. No hit needed. Perfect timing. Yeah. That was that's that is great to see, and we're just looking to see if Rika Pigs can uh, can can catch up, which certainly there's still a lot left to go, so it would be at all I possible. Mean, in, in the previous matches, Rika Pig has shown uh, they, they, they spend a lot of time in Ida, and it always feels like they are behind because they are still just reversing, they're not working on exploit, but, but then suddenly they start crafting their script uh, almost blindly without really a lot of testing, it seems like, and suddenly they, they, they really... Um, yeah, yeah run caught up speed. And, yeah exactly yeah. very different very different styles you see a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of both you can see that they are i think looking at uh, like the got table and now back to the like interpreter um i haven't seen that much of their exploit script yet so as i said they're just like really looking at the code trying to figure out what's going on um yeah, you can feel feel free to hang out with them for just a little bit too. We'll wait and see if they bring up their code. Right. We might, yeah. might catch a, gl a glimpse of that. I'll keep an eye on uh, Perfect Root. Let me know if something's happening over there. So, uh, I'm, you know, it's it's it, this is really the situation where you would want to be able to like read the minds of the of the players to just like, we just got to pause time go over there and ask them what are you thinking right now <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem they oh that's that's surely going to be appreciated right? yeah they i'm sorry that. can i interrupt you for <laughs> a moment? Yeah. Yeah. this one's your really your train of thought will it right but it feels like they have not quite seen this loop bug yet yep. uh, that's yep. my impression when like as a you know, with when you do programming or reading assembly, every, when you have experience, you, you have this mental model and you, you can really reason about the code that is happening. Um, but BrainFuck is a language you usually are not used to. So now not only have they to have they not only do they need to craft the BrainFuck program, but they have to craft a very small buggy program that does something interesting and reasoning about this little code, condensing it down. Um, these kind of abstraction layers you have in your mind when working with code bases and so forth. This is all missing with BrainFuck, and I think that is really, really difficult to do, especially under pressure. Yeah, definitely. I had this, uh, when I was creating like the reference uh, solution for this, uh, there were several moments where, where I went like, oh, I'll just do this. And then I realized that like doing this is something that would be like trivial in a normal Shell programming code, language or, yeah. or anything. But in this context, it's like actually quite a hassle. Yeah, and, and you're kind of merging these two contexts too, right? Because you have, and this is actually I think, really interesting because while this is a, clearly a toy language and, and not real, it very much models what you see like in a browser in JavaScript where they have a virtual machine, they have you know, mul often multiple interpreted languages, and you are both working within and outside of at the same time. So you have to mm, work within the yeah. memory model of the really native program. the layers. Yeah. Yeah, so I think because we're seeing uh, progress here on on Perfect Root, like we're good without a hint. Like they, they're, yeah, they don't seem stuck. They seem like they know what certainly the the first the first challenge is, um, and you know, Rika Pig's still got time to to catch up. So I think we're okay. Yeah, checking um, with the. We also do have a little bit of extra time too between this match and the next one. Right. So I'm not sure if you mentioned it also uh, that uh, oh no yeah you did with the unmatched uh, loop variable that Perfect Root has that already in their code right. Yeah, yeah, yes. exactly. So you exactly. can tell there. And you could also see um, there was some debugger output there when they were looking at the memory. And they're right here. You can see all of those three E's. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, that uh, corresponds to a dot, right? No, or that's two E. So three. No, or is it the greater? It's, it's one of the relevant characters in this. And you can see that there are way more than nine of them. I think it's going to be the greater than, because they got the greater than. All right, you can see there in the payload. They're writing yeah. in a lot of greater than. Oh, and this is exactly what they need to do for the stage two. This is exactly what right. you see. They have move that pointer so the all the way over into return address right. or something else. Right, right. Um, so they're definitely on so the I way. So I think they're just calculating offsets. They're just trying to figure out how far to move it over. Right. And then they need to figure out how far they need to, or what they need to increment to get that original return address over to the win function. Yeah, so the right? idea here is that you uh, you uh, walk the data pointer over to the return address. Pi is enabled, so they will have to first, uh, they will have to print 
uh, they will have to print the uh, current return address um, on the stack. The current, the print the current return address on the stack, uh, use that to calculate the address of the win function and then write back the new value. Uh, or a partial overwrite of the return address might also work uh, yep. fine. Yep, Top, couple just, of options. Just for clarification again, what, what we are seeing right now with the uh, BrainFuck program from Perfect Root, um, they have an input loop, the comma is input, so uh, basically they have a, a loop that keeps want, that, that keeps wanting to get input data yep. and then they send that and that causes you know writing more of the code and then the original program has the open bracket which is now matching what they were inputting later yep. Ex yeah so because because they put another bracket later that lets the 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 part of the program and, and, that's looking for that match to jump over yeah. the end of the code and when it finishes in the data the later on check that says am i st am i equal to the end says no you're not equal to the end keep going this is fine and it continues to interpret right and you can see and here the that additional the, data yep. they've got in there through the input loop came in through uh, all those commas the, exactly yeah. yeah right and you can see that the the second phase there in their in their exploit script it starts with a closing bracket to yes. catch that uh Jump. Because otherwise, it's going to go right past it. The yeah, other piece of code that's looking for the matching bracket just keeps going until it's either there or it yeah. hits the end of a memory Something's page. Something's weird. Yeah, happen. exactly. So it's not uh, going to do what you intend. Um, so they're definitely, you know, they definitely know what they're doing here. Uh, they just need to uh, figure um, out, like, the details here. Um, yeah. We're having some discussion in the in the chat here about the uh, uh, Google <laughs> CTF uh, Accelerate uh, yep. competition uh, that I was uh, involved with and a lot of my uh, colleagues. Uh, we uh, there are like similarities to this, uh, but there is like the game hacking yeah, uh, yeah. element to it, it as well. It is a visual element, which is nice. Right. Yes. So uh, and we will be hosting that as well uh, in September. Uh, People are so asking for videos. Are, are videos from 2021 coming out? They are coming out. We've had, uh, you know, some. Uh, there was a lot of work. There were people getting like uh, long COVID. Uh, yeah. You know, there, there were like a bunch of unfortunate events. But the videos, like the video files, still exist, and we will release <laughs> Not lost. them. They're coming out. Good. No, no, no. We have them. I have a spreadsheet tracking all the all the different video files. Uh, they will be released. Uh, so, so yeah. So, so keep an eye out on, on you know social media and stuff for for the accelerate uh, information as well. That's uh, going to be super fun. They, we're actually doing it on site this year. So oh, very nice. Trying to bring a bit of an esports vibe uh, to it as well. Uh, I think that would be super cool. Fantastic. Yeah, it's it's really exciting that we're seeing more and more of these like uh, events that try to let you see inside the hacking as it happens. Yeah. I guess it's not a coincidence then that those of us that are involved in it tend to be involved in multiple things too. So yes, uh, I would say the the you know the area of like security uh, live hacking <laughs> competition yeah. is very it's very small niche. field. Yeah, it's very niche. niche. Um, yeah. But, all right, so we've changed up the code a little bit. So we've got our ending bracket. We're going to move the pointer just a little bit extra. Uh, but that's actually is the problem that the data pointer and the instruction pointer are essentially overlapping uh, right now in their code and they're trying to yeah this is this is uh, exactly what uh, I think uh, you know uh, you know live overflow here you were you were talking about like this you need to create this mental model of these two pointers walking this buffer and it's not really something that you're familiar with yep so I'm just looking at this my guess <laughs> is that you can never win this race though right because uh, a single byte is a single byte, and so if your data pointer and instruction pointer are the same, and you, you you're going to move them both at the same same rate, do you, wouldn't you have to put it into a loop that would? Uh, that's how I did. Faster? I basically just had a loop uh, that went on until like I had an input loop, and then until like, I sent a null byte, it would stop. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think they're going to need something like that because I think essentially just putting a bunch of move bracket move writes is it's going to increment both the program counter and the data counter <laughs> at the same rate. Right, and yeah. so you're never going to win that race because they're both moving forward at the same rate. Uh, I, I guess think, that that uh, would be different if each uh, in, each byte was stored in like a bigger structure, like it was like a, a, a D word or something like that. You might be able to misalign mm, them differently that yeah. way. But um, so I think until we see that, they're going to be stuck on that stage unless I'm misunderstanding where where that is at. And so let's. Yeah, are we seeing anything from Recapix? Because they they have some ground to gain. They have been staring at the at the IDA code still. I think, 
I do wonder what they are thinking because they must see that they can move that array out of bounds for sure. I, I cannot like they, it, it's too easy. They, they they for sure have to know about it. It's, so it's hard I, though I, I, when what, you get like put on yeah. the spotlight. Sometimes something that would sure, be immediately sure. obvious if yeah. you were sitting at home. I but, think... but I do wonder if they have seen the restrictions and they understand. Uh, okay, we can't actually pull it off, and maybe they are hunting for a second bug. Um, and maybe playing around, they might notice, could could notice it. But I think they are just like in their head trying to. Yeah, uh, that's that's it a good out. point too. Again, that's what we saw earlier is that maybe they're yeah. trying to just put this together in a one shot, as as opposed to like build a small piece, test it, build a small piece, test it, and so. Yeah. You know, Speaking with, of uh, yeah. mental models again, uh, you can see that uh, thanks to how the program was compiled. So if you look at the source code, the the program array and the data array, they are oh, two there separate. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. That's the, a good looking one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. They are looking at the definition here. They're looking at the uh, loop uh, construct. Yes, yes. That is an interesting thing to look at. I think that's a, a fantastic thing mm. to be looking at. Yeah, and definitely. look how they write the code here. They write it in pseudocode, yeah, uh, and probably translate it then into um, into brain truck code because this is just easier for them to reason about what they are doing. Right. However, I do wonder if they miss then this trick with the keeping open bracket because you know that is something you can reason about in a brain truck program that's moving the cursor forward, while you know a dangling open bracket is not something you would. Yeah. No, Maybe like if you would write in, in uh, if you yeah. were write in C and you would have like an unmatched bracket, your code wouldn't compile. So that's like yeah. it's an error. You fix it and then you're done. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I was saying like in the source code, the program array and the data array are the two separate var variables next to each other. But the way this is compiled, if you look at the decompilation, it looks like one array and then there are a bunch of offsets sometimes when this is being accessed. So that can make it like a little bit harder mm. to reason about this. You need to kind of detangle this and say like, no, this is not one array. This is our two arrays that yeah. happen to be next yeah. to each other. Yeah, and that's the part that I think we're still not seeing perfect root uh, kind of piece together because they're they're trying to treat them independently without realizing that I think they happen to be overlapping. Because they've got this, they believe they've calculated the distance uh, correctly, but I think that they're, all they're going to end up doing is overwriting <clears throat> if they if they put too much data in. Um, Th they're going to end up actually just overwriting the return address with their data, which won't help them, right? Right. Because they're not going to be able to write the proper values. They're all going to be write things that happen to match these uh, uh, these characters. Uh, perfect root is going for here now testing, you know, writing arbitrary bytes instead of increments with the input uh, command, which obviously would save yep. space. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think they, they came to that conclusion as well and realized, oh, wait, let's just put the value, direct value that we want over top of it. Again, I th I think that the the only the only piece they're missing is that they need to be able to increment the pointer more efficiently. Yeah. Mm. Or, or sorry, increment the data pointer. They need to be able to move the data pointer to the right without having the code pointer move at the same rate. And so once they put that together, um, they should basically. Be so done. there are basically two ways you could do this. Um, I think. No. Uh, no. It's, it's there a is, fundamental they need flaw. A loop. They, they need have a loop. to have a loop. Yeah, I thought that they could have stuff before the closing bracket, but that's the wrong direct. That's the other way around. Right, right. It will be after that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The closing bracket always good begins. It just makes the problem worse, in fact, if you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, yes, they will do. They do need the loop. And this is exactly the, the type of problem you would face here. You're, you're thinking like, oh, I'll just uh, overflow the buffer. And then it's like, oh, no, wait, but I'm kind of like, uh, you know, cutting off the branch I'm sitting yes, on while that's, I'm doing that's it. Yes, that's a great analogy. Yeah, that's a great analogy. All right, so uh, there there is a chance that we, we need to give uh, different hints, potentially. Maybe if they're both stuck and they're both not making progress, we need to give them each a relative hint. I hate to do that. I would really prefer to give the same information to both. But if we end up, I think we're still okay on time, and so I don't think we need to immediately do anything. But just something we got to so kind of figure out. Yeah, uh, Rekapik was highlighting uh, this this the the limitation of the length. So um, I think they are still struggling with. Um, yeah, I think I think they need to get past that initial hurdle. And uh, Perfect Root is just really still stuck on on this one. Um, but we have time, I think. And it, honestly, 
Rekapig could come to this realization and still catch up to Perfect Root. Like, that is absolutely still possible here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they, it, maybe they, their mental model is already much further. I don't know. They spent a lot more time in Ida, so maybe they figured out the, the, the array situation. Right, maybe they would better understand um, that and be able to create that loop to get them past that, uh, yeah. that point. Uh, I mean, I will say, though, that what Perfect Root is doing makes a lot of sense in terms of, of analyzing things in the debugger while they're doing it. But what I think what they, I think what they need to do is to track what the variables that represent the pointers for the data and for the code in the virtual machine itself. I think that would really help them kind of realize this. So what they keep looking at is just the raw, the, the stack frames, basically, it's just the raw data where everything lives. They're not looking at the like what is what is what is the pointer for the code and what is the pointer for the data and what's happening there and so i think checking that in their debug script each time would probably make it click for them uh what they need to do uh but we'll see uh, we did get a question in uh chat actually i would love to hear uh both of y'all's opinion on this somebody says how can i start learning ctf what do you what do you guys each recommend it's a great question um yeah live overflow what's your uh, what's your take here let's start there <laughs> well, I hope my videos help. I have a ah, binary exactly. expectation <laughs> playlist. Uh, and other than that, my go-to, because I learned by doing it, you know, I didn't yep. have videos. So uh, recommending the way I learned is through war games like Over the Wire or Pico CTF. Um, I, I haven't done Pico CTF myself, but uh, that seems to be an amazing resource everybody recommends. And Over the uh, Wire, um, these are the type of challenges that I really learned with. Yeah, there's Punable.kr. Uh, yes. Oh yeah, there are many of those. Yeah. Well. yeah, there's a whole. I would bunch definitely of those. say uh, if I if I were to name like one starting resource that would be Pico CTF. Uh, that's that's where I would. Start. It is really really well done. Yeah, yeah they do a good job with that. Starts very easy, very simple. They have like help forums where you can ask him about it, uh, and uh, it, it slowly ramps up. They have a wide range of uh, categories, so it's not only like the Punables that we've seen in this tournament. They have like web challenges, forensics, cryptography, all the stuff. Um, it, yeah. And all of these popular sites uh, like Pico CTF and Over the Wire, there are lots of solutions online, which you should, you know, you need to find the balance yes. between avoiding the solutions and at some point looking them up. But not just looking them up, uh, working through them in case you choose to look through it, try to maybe look at it and then close it again and re implement it. You know, there are various ways how you can uh, yeah. learn, but just don't cheat yourself. But um, yeah, you could you could yeah. fail on, on either side of that, right? Like you can never look at the other resources, which is kind of some people re stubbornly refuse to like get any outside kind of help, which takes them longer to learn things. And then other people look too early and never force themselves to go through the learning process. So I think that's a great way to describe it. I mean, the reason why I enjoyed uh, li seeing live CTF back in the day was exactly this problem because I was playing these war games and, uh, you know, making it doing it kind of my way and I've never seen anybody else. How do they do it? And then I'm seeing live CTF and they solve a pwnable and see how they do their exploit script and everything. That was mind blowing to me. So yeah, it's it's I think it's important to, you know, take advantage of all these resources, what they can offer and combining them all together. Yeah, I think you're you're not going to be as fast as as the folks we're seeing here today without years and years and years and years of practice. Right? No, these yeah. are these are people yeah. who have at the top of the field and have have really practiced. They play a ton of CTFs, and it takes a lot to kind of get here. So don't be intimidated if you see see them them doing this. I mean, even like as as casters when we're watching them, we're in awe at the speed that some of these people yeah. look at. I and mean, like all I, three of us are like you know fairly experienced CTF players, but we are still, you know, impressed by this yes. thing. Mid, I would say we're mid-tier compared to what we're seeing yeah. in front of us uh, speed-wise, certainly. And this challenge is, like, doable. I think all the, both players know that this is doable, and still it takes them a lot of time. And, yeah. and they are super fast, you know, like, but, but maybe for an outsider it might seem crazy that you have to spend an hour on something that we would call easy. But it's just a, the matter of the fact these things just take a lot of iteration, tons of information you need to think about and reason about. Yeah, um, yeah it, I, even I, an easy challenge. I think takes we do a need to give time. a hint to both teams. I okay. think we're going to do the same hint to both. We're going to write two bits of information to each one of them. Yes. Right, because we're, we're going to write the same hint on both. So they both get the same hint, but it will contain two parts. Yes. Uh, the first part will. What about doing like opening bracket, closing bracket, opening brackets as the. As that one? 
Actually, no. Maybe, yeah, maybe we each give them each just half the hint because because the problem is if we give. Oh, then we tell Rika them. Pigs, we're are. telling them something. They were telling them something that, that Perfect Root has already figured out. So we need to tell them one bit of information to get them past where they're currently at. Right. This is. Uh, but but, but step away in terms from of the rules, fairness, right? uh, yeah. you know, both hints uh, wouldn't it be like just put it on the same paper? So like the problem with doing both hints. Two. Yeah. Here's here's the problem with both hints. If you give both hints, you're telling Rekapeg something that Perfect well, Root already knows. Well, depends on we, how we tell them, right? If we do, so both of them are struggling with loops, right? So maybe the hint is like maybe you need a loop, uh, for. Have you considered the loop is using the key. a loop? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have that, you that, yes. because that is the exact same hint yes. for both of them. Yes. That's fantastic. Okay. 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 Yeah. That is brilliant, and I love it, and I think we should definitely. Um, yeah. I think we should do that. So uh, that's a hint. Uh, have you, you need to use a loop. Yeah. Because they both do right now. They right. both need to use a loop. We will give uh, the same hint, but they will have... There's different contexts yes. to it. That's fantastic. Uh, so uh, Jordan is preparing this uh, hint. Um, <clears throat> so there was a question here in chat. Uh, what would you guys say is the CTF level of this challenge? So like in, a, in any normal CTF context, I would call this a fairly easy yeah, an uh, easy challenge, yeah. but for like the if you talk the the big serious CT, uh, not serious. That sounds so. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not an easy. It's not an easy beginner challenge. It's an easy no. challenge. Uh, with in the like, context of C teams that have been playing CTS for ten years, yes. And in that context, is an easy challenge uh, for for anybody. Like even for me, you know, that's a nice challenge. I would spend a couple of hours on probably. Um, uh, it's doable. It's, it, it doesn't feel impossible, but it's also like still has some trickery you need to figure out. Right. So we are about to give them the hints now. Jordan is going to go sort that out. Uh, yeah, this, uh, yeah, there's this traditional uh, so mentioned here. It's like a, there's someone saying it's a 200. So sometimes you will hear, especially older CTF players, like rating some uh, challenges on a 100 to 500 point scale, which to uh, pay players who started playing in like the last couple of years doesn't really make sense because nowadays we typically use the dynamic scoring system. But, you know, that's the most common uh, format of CTF is the Jeopardy style, like inspired by the TV show. Yep. And in that show, you have like in each category, you have five uh, questions uh, of like 100, 200 and so on down to 500 points. And that is how CTF challenges used to be scored back in the days. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so the dynamic scoring system that's currently in use makes a lot of sense because you're sort of letting the, the, the one of the main problems, and you've seen it here this weekend, right, is we think something is easy and turns out to be harder, we think something's harder and turns out to be easier. Like, we, we generally have gotten the, 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 it pretty right, but it's, it's impossible to be perfect. You're not going to get exactly the difficulty right because uh, you don't know exactly how people are going to solve things or what they're going to see. And so dynamic yeah, and, scoring and, system, yeah. And, and, and what kind of technical problems you run into. I mean, there's solving the challenge thing is one thing, but then maybe you c cannot run the binary. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe you, you look at the wrong the thing. Yep. Uh, maybe you misinterpret something as a bug that is not a bug or, you know, tons of dead ends you could run into and waste time on. Yeah, and so uh, all that can factor in. So being able to dynamically score challenges is really nice. And it's essentially the, the organizers saying, the fewer teams that score this, or maybe the longer time it goes unscored, the more points it's going to be worth, and then the more people to solve it, the less it will be worth, and so it kind of self-balances. And so you gain more points by solving things that fewer other teams solve, which kind of makes sense. And then if something is solved by fewer teams, it's more attractive. More teams want to solve it because it's worth more. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of like it really does a good job of, of letting that problem of the organizers not being able to perfectly gauge the difficulty doesn't really matter because the team that solves overall the most things that were solved by the fewest other people are going to be the ones with the high score. Yeah. It also kind of uh, took away the first blood that was often in some ch uh, CTFs, which is with time zones sometimes a little bit tricky. Yeah, it's very controversial. Uh, and even yeah. even in like in person, so even like here at DEF CON Finals, um, I'm not a huge fan of, of first blood. So that concept is, you know, the first blood means uh, just the first team to score on a particular service. And so uh, there was a, sometimes a bonus pool of points that could only be, and some of them were like even stages of the first three teams would get some sort of back off on, on points to do it. Uh, but yeah, especially with things like time zones, it can be, uh, it can be really hard uh, to have that work out. The other problem with first bloods 
is that, um, uh, or actually, it's, it's some of the reasons that people did first bloods was to try to counteract big teams, because large teams can spread out on many, many different topics. But a few really hard challenges that only an expert could solve by having first blood points, you're incentivizing your one particular really good person. So that's actually one of the other things that that organizers have to consider is. Do they want to let their game be winnable just because somebody has a really, really good team of people who are all you know, pretty good? Or do you want to focus a core uh, team of, of, of experts? And these are like topics that you know, people who are in the CTF community or organizing CTFs like, love to discuss these things <laughs> about like, you know. It's a good bar topic talk. How, how, how do we create fair uh, competition environment where you have these different like conflicting aspects. Like Absolutely. you want it to be accessible for new players while also being competitive for experienced players and you want to encourage the right type of behavior and so on. So it's definitely not an easy thing. Uh, coming back at here, what Perfect Root is doing, I mean, they were given the hint now that loops might be the solution to the problem they are having, but as they haven't executed on it. Uh, their code still doesn't include uh, any loop thing. I, they might be set on something. They might believe that they are on the right track and keep going, as far as I can tell it. Yeah, least, I'm afraid they uh, either the code. thought the hint applied to the thing that they've already solved, which it, yeah. it yeah, kind of did, which be. is why it was relevant for, for Rika Pigs, but they uh, might not see how it applies to their current problem. But no, so actually, they, I, I just realized they might not need a loop. Um, Go on. Yeah, so... I mean, if they carefully overwrite the values, right? No, so you... Um, okay. Everyone try to picture this in your mind now. We need a whiteboard. This yeah, is this is where we need a whiteboard. Uh, no, Professor yeah. Professor Carl needs to, to pull up a whiteboard. And... Right, but... So you have the data, the, the program section. It's, it's small, and you have the long data thing here, right? Okay. And then you use a loop here in the program thing to start writing stuff here. So you write data that's coming. And you're writing a BrainFact program here. And then right in the beginning here, you have an end uh, bracket, right? So your data pointer will go over here. And then uh, you will stop to this, and this will then jump to the end of your program and jump to the end bracket here. So your uh, instruction pointer is still like in the beginning of your new program, while the data pointer is like, you know, in the middle or oh, later. Is the in data the pointer at the end? Yes, of the and then you then they keep going like they do c go in tandem, but the data pointer is always going racing ahead of the program counter. And then as long as you have like enough instructions, because you're gonna need to go need to have to go back and forth a little bit to read and write, and you might need you know it might catch up to you. So as long as this you space all of that correctly, and, and you actually could put some intentional padding there too, right? Like you could just easily pad that out. All oh, right, like you could put some like just uh, extra the characters and then, and have your data point to be at the very end. So this is definitely doable without well. We think it is. It we think it is. Proven it. Yeah. So it could be it could be doable, but uh, it certainly would be easier to, to 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 do it that way. So we might just be seeing. Uh, uh, so yeah. So maybe maybe they're fine ignoring that hint and continuing on. Which yeah, we'll see how it goes. Right. Um, Recapic is still working with um, um, the pseudo code, uh, trying to reason about it. There was a comment about a leak. Uh, mm. Pointer to the leak or something. Uh, it, it's just, it's unfortunately uh, just below the, it, what they are showing right now. Yeah, it's a. Uh, hmm. But it, essentially, it's the same loop, right? Uh, the get the pointer while loop and then pointer get like that's the correct thing. I, it's, I'm now just curious if they uh, leave that bracket then at the end open you know the, this yeah. is the read in loop that perfect root also has but uh, right yeah, if they figure out the open bracket it's still unclear and i want to switch over to perfect root here because i see what i think they're trying to do when they have a bug in their code again you can see these like dot plus dot plus and so on in their code what i think they want here is a dot greater than dot greater than to like uh, dump out you see I think there are eight of them in that uh, or maybe it's just six of them but uh, the idea here is that uh, they uh, you want to use the dot to print the current value and then you advance the data pointer to the next step but the oh, plus right. sign yeah. increments the current value <laughs> that you're pointing at which is not what you want to do because then you're just like those well, dots but they, they should see it at least right so in the output if they're yeah, watching yeah, no, the no. output they'll notice that I'm just getting this increment yes and this is why they're getting you can see in the output there they're getting N-O-P-Q-R-S because exactly. they're just incrementing yeah. the same byte and printing yeah. it out uh, over and over again so they want to change those pluses to greater than to if uh, they're trying to actually dump yeah, out good catch good catch yeah, yeah. Uh, 
you can, uh, you know, you might notice that I've been had to program a bit of uh, brain fuck to, to build this challenge. <laughs> I would think so. Yes, this is, uh, you know, not healthy. It, it is at least, you know, one of the things I've seen teams do on similar kind of challenges is uh, just do a similar kind of virtual machine but totally different instructions. At least this one is sort of intuitive, like plus and dot and greater Correct. than and le less than. In fact, I think we even added. Uh, if memory serves, we, we added we one instruction here, correct? We extended the language with one instruction to make the challenge easier. So, uh, in my original solution, uh, because like if you do an overwrite of the return address, you need the function to actually return, right? Uh, and the only condition for the loop to break is if the program counter is at exactly nine. So in my original solution, you had to like make something to make the program counter jump all the way back to the beginning. Uh, but we decided that uh, we get rid of that and we instead add another instruction, which is the, the caret uh, character, and that will just... Uh, it's, a little, it's a little up arrow, so... Exactly, up. so like yeah. instead of going left or right, to go up uh, and it just to go out. out. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but it is, it is nice that uh, this is at least kind of intuitive. These are just random letters, I feel like. Well, actually, if they were random letters, what you probably would see was them using more of those kind of macro that helpers to find a variable that what's called inc or dec or next or prev or something like that, and you'd use those in line instead of the, the raw characters directly. Right. Oh, you can... Oh, uh, yes, go ahead. I was just seeing in Recapic, they figured out the unmatched uh, bracket. Oh, let's oh, switch fantastic. over there. Uh -oh, you see here at, on line 60, there, there's a comment, unmatched bracket. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, Excellent. I saw it. As well. Nice. Oh, very, very good. And I also wanted to point out uh, over on the Perfect Root site, you can see that they changed all the pluses to greater than characters in there. Yes, the so they, they're both making good progress. This is fantastic. Oh, that's really great. So we can see. Do we think that Rick Pig can catch up to this? That's the, that's the uh, you know exciting thing here. Uh, just trying to keep an eye on, on you know, both teams here. So back to the, the, the chat question, there's a little bit of discussion going on about uh, dynamic scoring and whether it's a bad uh, signal for beginners. And that's true. You can't actually, one of the downsides is if every challenge starts at 200 points or 100 points and it's just based on however many people solve it, uh, that you find the ultimate difficulty. Um, it's hard as a new person to know where to start. A lot of CTFs will kind of give some hints. They'll say an expected value, or they will say it's, they'll have some other difficulty ranking, yeah. ranking independent of the points. And so that way the, the organizers can say, we think this is hard. Hey, it turns out it was easy. There was a bug that they didn't intend. It ends up being easy and the points drive low. So you can see that signal afterwards and go, well, I wasn't going to try it, but look at all the people solving it. Maybe I'm going to try it now. A lot of the uh, like long running or like notoriously uh, difficult CTFs sometimes have like a category that they call like baby or like the a tag first or, yeah uh, newbie challenges so yeah. that they would say like you know okay uh we we uh, have a lot of difficult challenges but we we have selected a few here that we think are going to be good uh, just for people starting yes out. also you can just wait a bit to for you know uh, wait a couple of hours uh, into the ctf and you, see like yeah. which ones are being solved yes like, but you don't even have to do that because uh when 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 i play ctfs like this and i try to find the challenge that is easy um, I don't need to wait until the points are degraded. I look at the first few solves of the challenge, and if it's teams, I know, like the big, you know, the top CTF time teams that solved it, I know, yeah. okay, that's probably hard. <laughs> but if it's like teams, I don't know, then I assume, oh, this is doable. That's <laughs> a really interesting signal. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of like uh, meta gaming uh, that's been developed over the years. All right, so we're still seeing Perfect Root is, is tweaking and tuning. I haven't seen. Um, Okay, so they're they're inputting in the value. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the code right? yeah. at the payload there, and like the structure is all correct. Like they're dumping out, yeah. They're rewinding the data pointer. Then they they oh no no they have another bug. The do you see the back uh, the back the the last back arrow needs to go forwards instead because they're they're running over the return address to, to print it out. Then they're rewinding the oh, data yeah, pointer, yeah, yeah. but then they need to go forwards again. So that last yes, uh, yes, comma very, less than should yep. be comma greater than. Evil. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so they're these yeah. small things. And, and I will say, this is a good example where actually building your program a little more structure where you didn't use comma period and you actually just instead did something more obvious might have helped your the mental cue of mm. like no no I, wh what do I intend to do here am I trying to go forward or backward or up or down or anything yeah, yeah. recommend um, but so. we'll see so I'm I'm looking forward if 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 Recapig catches up again or Recapig this this absolutely could be uh, could be a match again yeah I mean Recapig is definitely uh, getting uh, catching up again because uh, Perfect Root has been at the stage now for quite a while and is a bit 
I don't know, like the progress hasn't been as in, in as big leaps. Uh, I, I feel like on on perfect root side. I mean, they definitely have a better understanding of it, but you know, they they are not close to to, to solving it. I I think. Oh no! You said the magic words. As soon as we predict that, they uh, they tend to blow through and solve it. Uh, it's like right. saying, "Oh, surely it won't <laughs> rain today," because uh, I just washed my car. Um, yeah, maybe you should predict again that Rick yeah. Pick is behind. This is oh, Rick Pick is real <laughs> behind. There's no way they can catch up. And then two minutes later, uh, winner winner uh, pops up. Yeah, we have uh, there's a lot of casters curse going on uh, this <laughs> That's tournament. Right. That's right. I don't want to uh, I don't want to unduly influence the game here. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, so what are they looking? They're dumping out. They're printing what they believe to be a leak. Okay, so they're verifying a leak. They think they've got. Yes, and you see oh, oh, there. Oh, 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 they just missed it. Yeah, no, it's that. They just missed it. They still need to change that to a greater than. Yes. So the other way you can do it is you can skip the rewinding and just type the, the, the address in backwards. But yeah. this is like an easier mental model. Uh, I think Perfect Root is like very close I to think solving that. Yeah, like, if, I think they only need to flip that less than to a greater than. And then, uh, you know. And they're basically done. Yeah, they're basically right. done. Then, and they'll still have to actually do the overwrite, but they've got a leak and they've got the address and they've got the difference and then it's. Yeah. Right, four bytes in return. Uh, the only last thing would be, do they see the escape? If they don't see the exit, or sorry, the, the exit operation. Um, right. They might not be able, that might be another stumbling block. All right, because they might be, this is another danger, right, of like abstractions and mental models, right? They might say like, oh, this is brain fuck. And, and then they not just, even look at it. No, right. but, and they're just not noticing that we have this extra, because then if they do need to rewind the instruction point to think like all the way to the back, uh, that's a little bit annoying because you need to kind of shift the way you would do it is you have like another unmatched uh, you have a more like closing brackets and then it will search backwards for corresponding opening brackets and you do that like multiple times and stuff it's uh, it's a bit annoying yeah so let's see what are we what are we leaking over here on perfect root we've got so yeah, it's really about like working that debugger and, and like, seeing that, you know, they're not overriding what they think they're overriding. Uh, yes, so I want to switch over to Rika Pigs because I think they had you know, the debugger up looking into the code. I want to see what payload they are currently sending. Uh, it's... Uh, you know they are they have progress clearly and now they're looking at hmm, i'm trying to see what part of the code this is it's the printing uh, yeah so they're looking at the print uh, the dot operator uh and uh, i'm not entirely sure what they what the question they're trying to answer here right now uh it's yeah so this is uh, hard to tell. Yeah, so we're internally, you know, we're debating right now. Do we think they they can solve it? Are we going to be uh, needing another hint, or do we need to switch to a sudden death? Um, it is the 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 way that we've been handling that transition is if we hit our uh, time limit, which we are actually uh, coming up on the original the original end, but because this match has an extra gap. Um, we we might uh, go up and basically ask the team and say, do you want to move to sudden death? Or do you want to switch this? I really don't want to switch to sudden death, though. We've seen what happened last time. Yeah. Uh, I will say, though, our sudden death is real sudden uh, on this one. So if okay. we go to it, yeah. uh, we're pretty sure that it would it would uh, be solvable. Uh, but certainly you would rather have uh, the teams be able to finish this out. And we do have a little bit of extra. We built some, a gap in time here between the semifinals and the finals. Um, so... I keep, I'm trying to figure out what Perfect Root's doing. They're they're rerunning the same thing over and over. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of how I play CTF. Running. Just hoping that it changes. Like I, Oh, yeah. There was uh, like the same thing that uh, Falk said yesterday. Like, you yeah, know. exactly. Even though I know it's not going to be any good, I keep rerunning it. Now, they think they've got to be doing this thinking that there's some like randomness that's impacting it. Uh, in the meantime, I can give you a score update on the uh, DEFCON, see the main uh, scoreboard for the DEFCON CTF. Um, we just had a site so fault, by the way. We there have, was a site uh, fault. 
MMM in first place, tightly followed by Katsubin. It's the same top fight as we've seen uh, multiple times before, I think. And then we have Water Paddler in third place. Uh, fairly close as well. So there's definitely a lot of things can happen. And the, the, all of this stuff has not factored in the points from this live CTF. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Perfect Root, who is in this match, they are currently in fifth place. But if they would win this or like even go on and win the finals, that would bring them almost up to first place. Uh, almost. I uh, mean, I, I, they wouldn't let them jump. It uh, might let them jump Katzebin, but it wouldn't let them jump uh, Maple for sure. Yes, but they will also get some points cause, from cause, the tournament. Yeah, because MMM is going to be getting some points having made it to the semifinals. Right. How, how long will the main CTF uh, run? When will that be over? It runs for another two hours. So it's, okay. it's really getting, getting there. Yeah, these, these, these scores are probably not going to shift much. And if you're not familiar, so just like a, a real quick summary of what the uh, the final format is for a DEFCON CTF. It's an attack-defense CTF. There are, all the teams are given essentially a number of uh, systems that they're, or a number of processes that are running on a system of theirs. They have to defend it by patching those binaries, and they have to attack their opponents by finding vulnerabilities, creating exploits, and sending them against everybody else. And so it's a zero-sum game. You sort of start with like a certain amount of points, and then as someone steals from you, you lose a point, they gain a point. And so you're, you see what you happen is you see everyone started, I think, at uh, 20,000 points or 16,000 points, something like that. And then they're spreading out. And so the top teams steal from the lower teams. And so the lowest team now is down at, at 14,000 points, and the highest team is up at 22,000 points. So you don't start at zero and then build up. You start kind of in the middle, and then some go up and some go down. Uh, with this particular scoring method. And so uh, that does mean, though, that there's not a lot of, like, um, big shifts, wild shifts, uh, because it's uh, there's only so many kind of points available. Uh, and so it, it tends to be harder to come from behind at the very last minute, although it depends on how close you are. And there's, there's uh, you know, one new solve on a service that no one else has done can can start to swing it because the graphs will, will shift in terms of the... the rate of scoring. Uh, go ahead, Lavar. Yeah, we should look at Perfect Root. They were actually, I think, confident about something that they that they code did. They had this, you see it now, uncommon um, echo pwned. Uh, they were running it, um, which looked like they were checking if, if they got the code execution. I, they, it, I think they think they are pretty close. Yeah, it's, uh, I still think that they are missing that, like, Unless they're doing something different than we expect, I think you're right. Yeah, it, they it, can see they're trying to uh, uh, submit. Uh... I mean, they, they did uncomment it again, uh, commented it out again, but uh, it was in there, and they they had it running for a bit. They had a. Uh, do you see they have a wild true loop? They were thinking that something is. Uh, yeah, as you said, uh, that something is random a little bit when we are. So they were running it in a in a wild true loop, just. A, trying it over and over again. Yeah, and they had an off by one. There we go. That's what they were looking for. That's what they were looking for. Because they had a, a 90 at the end. They were oh, off that's by the, one. Oh, no, no. That, yeah, that's, that, that's now they have it. They have the return. There was, on the, there was top of the stack, return address. They yeah, should. Yeah, they were off by one, but they mainly added that extra right over there to the end. And so, <laughs> yeah, that, not that, the most reliable of exploits. Yeah, that's. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, there have been, so depending on the, the the challenges, there was a situation where you didn't always see your output. And so if you try to do an echo pwn and detect on it, I know that at least some of the earlier challenges. No, no, it was just a submitter just, program, for example. Oh, it's right? just so a submitter. This, this should not be an issue here. Also, they're just running this locally, right? Oh, no, I think it was specifically the, the command injection with the back text. That's, that was what it was involved. Right, because then the you needed injection. to do the semicolon. Right, the, the back text, you wouldn't see your output. So I think, though, in this case, that this is still solid. If they actually get this, um, they they should be right. So I'm I'm curious. Is that zero zero sixty nine? Is that them calling the win function? Um, was that the offset of the? Uh, I'm a little bit unsure, but like, to me, oh, it looks they maybe uh, is they... is is Pi enabled? Uh... Pi is enabled, but they are leaking the. Oh yeah, they have a leak. Uh, uh... They have a leak. Uh, but the the thing is that. 
Yes, yeah. in fact, players nibble because you can actually see Rekipitz literally just now pulled up Checksec. Right, we just missed it on screen, but they yeah. were looking <laughs> at Checksec uh, and they saw the pie. They literally just highlighted it. Yeah, they, yeah, they looked like yeah. annoyed by They're it. They're like, oh no, there is pie. So, I mean, it, again, it is solvable, but that does mean that they can't just hard code something and, and win. Right. Uh, but, but, but come on, we did get them a win function. So but if that's a concern for Rick, Rick Epic at this moment, they feel like they are getting close to like tweaking some yeah, adverses maybe as well. That's a good point. They may actually... Yeah, I, I think we're really close here um, from Perfect Root. And it is still possible that Rick, uh, Rika Pig is able to... Uh, uh, depending on what the, what the state of their payload is. I'm really curious to 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 dis you know kind of post mortem anal analyze this later and figure out why that like many 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 runs on the perfect route side is what part of this is not a reliable uh, or what are they what are they analyzing when they're running it like a million times in a row? Or they change it out to remote? <laughs> yeah, they they're just gonna throw it. They are confident that it's really just a little bit of randomness that's the problem. And I'm not sure what randomness is like is coming into play that, that would be causing them trouble. Yeah. Are they maybe just partially no 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 they have a leak. But it looked like they were partially over random. You can uh, see that they the... took the leak and they uh sent back everything except the last uh or oh, yeah. they're brute forcing. That's what they're doing, is they're brute forcing the win relative address? I bet that's exactly what they're doing. They're gonna oh, just why are they not okay. just writing the exact difference? Like read the full value and then change it relatively. I mean, I, I don't know why, but I think that's what they're doing. I'm okay. pretty sure. Is, is, is the BrainFuck program in main? Because then the return pointer would be. Uh, would that? Would that? Oh, is this an to... issue? They are not like. Is is it, I, I'm not so sure if I re misremember this, but does it not point into uh, Lipsy start main and so? that points to libc code and not um... uh yeah so but maybe i'm i'm also saying something completely with them. I, that I'm might not sure. be yeah actually no i'm oh, no that might be the they're, issue they're not brute forcing anything because they're not trying different yeah i mean that, that brute might forcing be... the last two bytes doesn't make sense so i realize that this might be the issue what is the issue that the return address is not to like the, since this is running is this running in main in the main uh, function and then like the return address is not uh, it's to libc and not um uh and not within the program so they don't have uh, a leak in that sense uh, they would need to leak some other value. So, so your solution then was, was it because it incremented or decremented it? Instead no, because of... I used a much more complicated solution before we uh, made, simplified the challenge. But my complicated solution still worked on the simplified challenge, yeah. but we didn't verify that the simplified... Uh, so so but what was the complicated solution for correctly overriding the return address? Like what was the... the well, it did? involved the ROP chain. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. But... Sorry, we've got a little bit of a, a we've got a couple of uh, bad cables we've been fighting. Yeah. So if we lost the the stream there for a second. I really relate to the groups. Is uh, this is something yeah. though? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have your script and you just keep running your thing, looking at memory values, just you know, uh, I don't know, running in circles a bit. Yes. I'm trying to think about whether they could leak some other value that's within the, uh, you know, I mean, they totally could. They just need to find some value on the stack yeah. that's within the program, right? Isn't the C main also like a function that gets as a parameter the of main which might then also be right it, it has to be so like the, the one of the address it, it will be on the stack yeah. just a bit further away yeah. oh maybe yeah, then yeah. that's then if, maybe it's not the bug that they had the the 
less than signed. Maybe uh, they're overwriting. But maybe oh. they, so it was just that they needed to, to go a little bit further down the stack mm. and then they go up again. So maybe that's not a bug at all. Maybe we've just misunderstood. Yeah, uh, they what were the intentionally trying. leaking the main pointer not as a return address right. but as an argument. And then they want to. Yeah, and then that's they're very writing reasonable. That back out. So then the question is like, well, so what is the bug? Like, what are this? What is what is Perfect Root stuck on now? Then, if that's the case, they should be able to overwrite the return address with that main pointer, plus the offset to, to the win instead, right? Yeah. Which uh, should, should work. I mean, that should absolutely be a valid solution where it will put them back in the main, uh, put them back, or sorry, put them back into the win. So and that's a matter of fixing the um, Yeah, so, oh, this is so, you know, I know. Nerve wracking. It's imperfect knowledge on on all sides, and let's just yeah. double check back to. Oh Rick look, they, oh, yeah, because hey, look, they are working here with some addresses as well. They second prog address, leak address, uh, slow and address. steady yeah. might still be be valid here. So yeah, let's take a look at them for a while and see. Now if we can get some pointer state. should point to end of second program, right? Which is a good understanding. Which maybe yeah. I don't know if if perfect root had that understanding where the where the the pointer or the data pointer and the instruction pointer pointing to of the brain fog program. Yeah. No, it's uh, definitely interesting to see the completely different, uh, you know, approaches here to, to, you know, the challenges from the different teams. Um, oh, they have, okay. So I'm just keeping an eye on perfect route. They actually had, they had win. Is that a backtrace that they're showing or is that just disassembly? They were, so Are you saying that they, they did have the address of the win function? Win itself showed up in one of these these traces. So right there, oh, it's flickering. Uh, right there, where we're, I think they're just doing a back trace. <laughs> I can't even tell. I think that's a stack, right? Right there at the bottom of the Jeff, right there. So right, that's the, yeah, the bottom yeah, of the stack. Yeah, so the stack trace. they showed win showed up on there. They oh. had win in the stack trace and they were hitting exception earlier. So something was blocking them from returning directly. Yeah. Because, I mean, they don't have in their program that they're running, right? They don't have anything that returns, but I've seen them hit the return instruction. So I'm a little bit unsure what's going on oh, there. Oh, are they? Is that the, what, that's what they're brute forcing? They're brute forcing the behavior to try to get an exit that's clean instead of just calling exit. Oh. Is that what they're trying to get around? If they literally just call the exit. That's... Uh... I mean, could be. Oh wow, that's uh, that might be what they're fighting. It may because again, we don't see we don't see them calling the exit instruction. No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. So they should be able to just do that. I mean, I think I think we need to tell both of them because we haven't seen neither team. Oh use right, them. So yeah. So let's add names. a hint for the for the because I think we need to let both of them know. And this is probably going to be the last hint. If we can't get it here soon, we're going to just yeah. have to unfortunately go to sudden death. But let's let's see if we can. Oh. Oh, no, we can't give that hint. We can no longer give that hint. I just saw that. Yeah. So because, the, uh, because let's switch over yeah. to, let me switch over here to Reiki Pink. You see that they have, uh, they are uh, uh, calling the L just, so they're padding their code with the exit instruction. So they are very aware of yeah. that they can use they this. They know exit. exactly so what that's going to do. If these two players would combine their I know. Uh, knowledge. They each have half of an exploit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, then, which is a, a good example of real CTF with, uh, with teams. Uh, they would complement each other so well absolutely. and they would resolve this in, you know, a fraction of the time now. Yeah, and that's yes. why playing with a team is so much more fun. They catch your mistakes, they look over your shoulder and they point out, hey, did you really mean to do a, a plus or a greater than? Or in, in that, you know. Right. Um, it is so much more enjoyable to do a CTF with uh, with somebody else. Right, and the thing is here that Perfect Root, um, if we if we go back to them, they will not notice this because they are not even looking at, at the code anymore. They're no. just in the no. they're They've looking at the, the exploit, they're looking at yeah. the debugger. Yep. They're completely missing that there is this extra instruction. What do you think they try to do? Like disconnect, and then that makes main return because it exits out of the 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 brain fuck loop, or how how do they even reach the return? I th honestly think they're flailing, and I think they don't have a clear plan, and are just trying a bunch of different stuff to see if they can get it to um, call system. Hold on, what is this? With main stopped. Wait. Oh, there was a red. Look, yeah. they overwrote main red. They add red, and it, yeah. it's pointing into win, but. Uh, now they are executing win. What are they? Yeah, this should this should just. Oh no no no! Pop RVP. 
Pop RVP is going to pop the pointer to win off. Right? Because win is on the stack. No, no, that's... Well... Or is that... Oh, no, that's actually the cool I, stack. I, I did pause stack. on yeah, the... Yeah. on the. They, they were at the red of main and it pointed into win. So somehow they reached that red, apparently. Yeah, are they having... Yeah, they're having trouble with the call to system. Is it, are they accidentally... No, I don't know. Yeah. So they shouldn't have to worry about the arguments because wind sets all that up. For yeah. Them. But they're if they're triggering, if they're breaking in there, what is breaking that's causing? Are they trying to do like a small rub thing here instead of just? Yeah, I'm not sure what they've actually switched over to doing. I, so in one frame when I paused, uh, they were at the return of main, and so you know it it the the Jeff output showed where it would continue, and it pointed into win, but at the end of win, at the return of win. Oh, so, uh, okay. You know, so they're like off but, by a few bytes. Uh, yeah, but but that was just just one frame where I paused on, and then uh, on a consecutive one they were actually stepping through win. So, um, so I don't know what what changed, like why why suddenly it was at the start of win, sometimes not. Maybe that is the randomness they are observing, and we haven't just noticed that. Right. Um, I want to switch back over to Ricky Pig a little bit ahead, and, and, and uh, look at how, I mean, you can't quite see it. Now you can see it, like like how beautiful their uh, like exploit script is here, where they have created these abstractions for the instructions, and they're giving them meaningful names instead of these random symbols. Uh, and you can see how they're slowly building this up, adding the comments, and going very methodical uh, in this. And, you know, they're slowly catching up, uh, importing time, not sure why, but <laughs> uh, maybe, oh, okay, they're just going to do a short sleep here, uh, it seems. Um, and uh, I'm not sure exactly how far, but you can see they have the initial stager with the unmatched uh, uh, bracket. They have uh, the second stage here with uh, padding out with the exit instruction uh, and stuff. So you see they're really getting there uh, and... Uh, Perfect Druid is, uh, you don't have to switch back, but I'm just uh, watching them. They're in the bowels of uh, GDB debugging system, uh, trying to figure out... Uh, oh, is this like... Trying to figure out, like, in the lib C, and they're getting, like... Yeah, like they're in, like, POSIX spawn action currently. Like, they're just... There's some other exception that's being triggered. I don't know what has been corrupted or what's changed. They must be really frustrating that they start uh, uh, looking through that. Yeah. See, we had a question what, what we want to do here. If we want to go to, uh, if we're going <laughs> to give them a hint or... I mean... I, I kind I, of still want to... I feel like we do have a little bit of time. Um, we don't want to eat into all of our spare time before our final match. We want to give the team, whoever wins, does want a little bit of a break to flush their head and, and not go straight into it. Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, we do have to cut this off at some point and, and switch to a sudden death. Um, this, this just... Yeah, this still feels like something is inches away. I mean, I don't know what in the world is, is even blocking this because we're seeing the, the, the win function is being called. Like, they're calling win. Could it um, be some, like, uh, have they, like, messed up the stack pointer in such a way that there's, like, stack misalignment or... Uh... Uh, I, I don't know, and they certainly don't either, given uh, yeah. the time the debugger being sent. Oh, so. now they're going for one gadget? Yeah. So they're going to try to avoid our win function and instead just go directly for... Now, yeah. did your original one use the win function as well, or was your original solution avoiding it too? No, my original solution did not use the win function. Yeah, so it may be that just by avoiding it, they're going to end up getting uh, getting a win here. So that is a possibility, but I just don't know how long it's going to take them to do that. Mm. And then the question is, is Rika Pig going to sort of slow and steady and, and be able to catch up or do we just need to call this one and move on? Actually, now that you mention uh, the misaligned stack, I do remember writing a challenge for uh, the cybersecurity challenge Germany, like a basic pwnable and we and if you and there was a win function, I believe, and when you solved it, there was a problem with misaligned stack because system or ex something in, in that code is expecting uh, stuff to be aligned, but there was a pretty clear exception that when you Google it, you would find the information about that. And the solution, you actually had to do a one, um, one basically pop uh, red 
to uh, to align it again, and then then the win function did work. Now that you mentioned this, uh, I remember that. Which yeah. though isn't Interpret really an option when you're working from an interpreter like this, right? Where you sort of have this different environment, so it's not uh, it's not clear what that would even look like because they don't have they have a single overwrite of the return address. They don't. No, no, I mean they can override right. like. They can overwrite a lot of stuff if they want. Like they could. Yeah, but it would, oh, sorry, it would be. A, they'd have to override. They'd have to find the next return address on the stack and then go overwrite that as well. No, 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 no. They could replace. Oh, the, it's just two in a row. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah they, right. they could do that. Uh, definitely. Yeah, that's actually. That's and like, since they have a, a leak, uh, they can use that to just you know find a ret gadget. Uh, well, again. they already had the libc. Yeah. The yeah, libc yeah, yeah, leak was exactly. already essentially there. Oh. Here, let's switch over here again to uh, Recapig because uh, I just saw on the terminal, I saw the stack smashing detected uh, message, which means that they have Might overwritten from the... Uh, yeah. And not only have they overwritten the return address, they have uh, triggered the return because otherwise the, the stack right. smashing well, detected... Well, we knew that they had those exits because they did that padding, and so they had yes, that part yes. of it right away, mm. which again, I, I, I don't see that at oh, all. So in... might we... Is it possible that we might see the, like, you know... A big catch-up uh, moment here from tortoise from in the hair. This might might be mm. it. Yes. Uh. Yeah, there's a move apps instruction uh, that uh, doesn't like uh, unaligned addresses, which is um, which happens in system. Uh, I have a video on that um, uh, solving that that basic pointable challenges and I had this problem um, yeah you, you get a sec fault sec fault at address zero a very weird exception um, and then you know you look at what instruction caused the exception and it's a move apps instruction and when you google that you then find move apps uh, unaligned address and then you know uh, so that might be the issue here that yeah, the win yeah. function is just not callable well no I, th I my suspicion is it is callable if you exit cleanly Right, so my suspicion is because that brute force that we're seeing from Perfect Root, I think, is an artifact of how they're they're getting their uh, the, their return out. Right, I think that's what's what's potentially getting it misaligned. Um, whereas if they were to actually just let the interpreter cleanly exit out, uh, that they would. Um, and here I want to say, and we see here on Rika Pig's screen that you see that right, and you saw the stack smashing detected there, so. Uh, they have been like just writing a bit too far uh, on the stack. I, I'm I'm not entirely sure if this like is an intentional uh, smash to just like verify that they are doing the right thing, or if it's an ac accidental smash because they misaligned some of their uh, data. Uh, that still uh, remains to be seen. Uh, so yeah, I think we and we are we are gonna have to like uh, certainly go to sudden death here pretty soon. I think in certainly the next five minutes or so. Yeah. Um, if we're not like real real close, because uh, we don't have confidence yet that um, we we don't know for certain if the exit cleanly would solve it uh, for perfect truth, and we don't know. Um, and even the things that they're changing now, they're, this one gadget attempt might be a little ambitious for the time that's left. Right. So we're still trying to. Uh, trying to figure that out. Yes. So the question is, do we do we ask them or do we just go to sudden death? I I don't think we give them an option. Um, yeah. If we we should get them as long as we can, and once we hit the moment where we we can't uh, can't go any further um, because we just have to 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 get on to to queue up for the finals, then we're gonna have to uh, just just cut it off. Yeah. So uh, I don't know that we're there yet. We're seeing a one gadget attempt. Uh, oh man, I want them. I want them to do it. I, yeah, really I really want to see this. It. Yeah. So so how's how's looking over there on Rika Pig? Uh, yeah. So uh, Rika Pig, they are inspecting the stack here uh, in the debugger. Uh, um, and uh, you can see here their their program, the padding that they filled out. Oh, so okay. So since they're doing this padding thing, right? Then um, they are. It, I, I suspect that the smashing was because of like they miscalculated exactly how long uh, their like padding and stuff should should be, right? So um, we'll see if uh, if they can kind of like fix that alignment up or like the size of the payload. And to, then to move on to actually controlling the, um, 
the overrides. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, for a while I was really like, okay, uh, Perfect Truth is gonna, yeah, yeah Perfect Truth is gonna have this. Right through it uh, I'm not so sure anymore. Like, this could really go either way. Um, yeah, and again, I mean, I think, I think, uh, I'm not confident. Uh, I'm gonna say we got again three more minutes to like be sure someone's gonna solve it, or we're just gonna we're gonna have to switch over to uh, to our sudden death because we we do want to give them at least a good 10, 20 minutes to solve sudden death, and then <laughs> go to the bathroom uh, and come back for for the the, the finals because you know when I have to. Yes. And, and the finals, unfortunately, we 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 have to have enough time for that. Because the scores have to be in, we have to announce the winner. It has to go. It has to go into the DEFCON CTF final right. score. So we we do have some hard limits that we're, we're unfortunately working against. Where right. this uh, we need a winner uh, to be able to allocate these points. The good thing is that the teams can choose to send another player uh, for the finals. That's a great point. That's a great point. They were not required to send the same player. Yes. So it is entirely possible that someone decides, uh, hey, I'm burnt out. You got to send somebody else. That that last CTF ruined me. So. Do you know uh, how the other teams have done this so far? Have they sent uh, other people in these subsequent So far, only rounds, MMM. Or? Might be. So, you know, the, the total that any team would have to send is for four rounds. So it's not an overwhelming amount spread out over these three days, right? And so it's not too right. crazy. And so we've only seen so far MMM, I think, is the only one that I've noticed. Yeah, they swapped uh, between uh, swapped. Robert and uh, Jinmo. <laughs> Uh, for for their rounds, so between their uh, first and second and second and third, there was a there was a switch in and switch out. Uh, but everyone else seems to have, have been sending the, the same person. Do you think uh, the players did this voluntarily, or do you think it, within the team they had to throw? A coin. That's a that's a good question. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was. Uh, it seems just, it has varied. Uh, I do know some other teams specifically said they were kind of like picking coins because multiple people wanted to go, or uh, and they had to kind of pick out who was available. Yeah. I wanted to go is positive. I was more, more worried that they would feel uncomfortable. Okay. I think we're gonna have to switch over to sudden death. Um, I, I I hate to do this. Um, of course, we want to see them solve it, but at this point. Um, I'm just seeing some hesitation on Perfect Root. Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, Alex has kind of a sense of, of what it's going to take to finish this out. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and let each team know um, that we're switching to sudden death because we want to give them a break between the final rounds. And we will, uh, uh, just give me a second, I'm going to take off my, my gear, I'm going to let them know, and we'll, we'll count that one in shortly. Right. So uh, yeah. that's unfortunate to see. Obviously, we would want them. We would want to see a finish, a working exploit, but it's understandable. Uh, we, the the schedule, requires it, and of course they are also missing from the main CTF, right? I mean, it's it, it's now the final hour kind of of the big CTF, maybe. It is but, almost. Uh, there's one and a half hour yeah. left of the main CTF. So. so it's not like that they can do that much, but mm. still they are missing from their main team, right? Yes. For, for quite a long time now. And, th and this is like a choice the, the teams have to make, right? Uh, like, which, who do they send for this? Like, to balance that, like, where do they think the, the, their most skilled players are of the most use? Right. Sorry, there was some. Uh, you know, we were just preparing for the for the sudden death uh, part here, so we're just getting them set up, uh, swapping out the the challenge, um, and uh, giving them a new simple challenge. And this challenge is going to be super simple. I mean, I barely know if we're going to have the time to like commentate on what's going to go on here, uh, because I think we're picking our simplest challenge in the in the stash. Um, yeah, it's going to be rough. Okay, so Jordan is over with the players explaining the explaining. Yeah, the somebody situation. in chat asked what sudden death is. Um, of this is when the weapons come out. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, yes, no. This is when we see the first blood. Right, exactly. No, so the sudden death is that we stop the current challenge, uh, and we should have people not walking past the camera. Um, but anyway. Um, 
sudden death, we stop the current challenge. We swap it out, completely new challenge. This new challenge is supposed to be super simple. It's going to be like, it's, it's going to be fast. And starting now. And then they have the new challenge and they're downloading it. We're switching over to the split view. They're downloading the challenge. Um, and uh, yeah, they're going to look at it. And this is going to be uh, a slaughter. Uh, is this the format string thing? Jordan? Are you? Hello? I'm not sure. Sorry. Yeah, yes. Still getting stood up back in. Uh, I actually don't know which uh, sudden death we had lined up for this one. Right. So we can switch over to Perf. Sorry, to Ricky Pig. And see, they just up, uh, look at it here. And uh, the it's about inputting some passwords here. And you need to input your uh, logins. You can see that they you need to log in with admin and correct towards battery staple. The uh, classic XKCD the, password joke. Yeah. Right, yes. And then, is it just reading in shellcode and executing it? Is that what I saw? I'm pretty sure oh. that, yeah, this one is like meant to be pure speed. Oh, yes. oh, oh, perfect root is already opening Google. Right, we have some shellcode in there. Uh, and uh, they are. Wow, this is stressful. So I think they basically just they send uh, admin password or a username password and then send shellcode and it will be executed. So let's see who can do this first. We can see them copy copy pasting um, the uh, username. Uh, so and then they so we can see here. I'm going to switch over to Rikapig because you can see very clearly in their exploit script. Um, actually, you can see it clearly in both of them. Oh, this is going to be rough. Uh, I really hope the flag submission thing is oh, uh, oh the, the the ls didn't work no nope. right yeah, perfect, perfect root root was right switch over to perfect root and see there there is something not wrong not working with their uh i think they need so the f read uh they might have to pad out the is there a new, new uh, the shell code to be the size of the you know input there we go yep that's exactly what we're seeing we're seeing the right. padding coming in there yeah they're padding it out uh, and then they're sending it, and will it they be? Yes, yes, there it is. There it is. Yes. There's a shell. Uh, there it is. We have a winner. Congratulations to Perfect Roots. Oh my God. That was brutal. That was very, very harsh. Yeah. Uh, we got to go on a break. We got to get back to uh, the uh, the teams to talk to them real quickly and line up the final round. We'll be here in 30 minutes uh, with the finals. I look forward to seeing you back here then. See ya. Thanks.
going. Hello and welcome back to our final event of a very long weekend. We are super excited to be here. We're super excited to be looking at the best two teams. Uh, are, are you ready? Uh, you said you were nervous a second ago. Oh yeah, I mean this is like the you know the the final match. Like this is when it all comes together. So uh, we've had yeah. we've had Perfect Route, we've had Starbug. They've both battled through three other rounds to make it here to this final event. And uh, we're going to get the game started to, to get the, the competitors are nervous, they're ready to go. Uh, for context, the game is over. The DEF CON CTF itself is ended. Uh, this is the final bit of points that anyone can get in this event before it's going to be tallied for the awards ceremony later today. So, okay. let's do it. Everybody, we're going to kick it off. Five, Five four, three, three, two, two one, one, go! go. And let's right. let them rip. So let's take a look at the, the teams and what yes. they're up to. Uh, we're going to need a reset on our capture card over here. Capture card reset, please. Yes. We've got one so that's in, not working, but in the meantime, we'll get that fixed. We'll just go to Perfect Route uh, and watch uh, what they're doing. And uh, we can see that they're immediately going into Ida to look at the code of uh, this Oh, we've challenge. got different themes, at least. So now we've got our black yes. and white themes. Yes. Both doing the exact same thing, looking at both, both of their, uh, their systems and popping open their, their default template scripts. What is the name of this challenge that we're, that we're looking at uh, today? So we're looking at the F in the stack, right? We actually had several challenges and internally named F in yes, the stack. Yes, it was Only F in the stack and another F in the stack. We changed the name of that one, but this is the original F in the stack. Uh, you know, uh, it is... Um, I mean, so it's, it's a reference, obviously, to the, the, the meme, like F yeah, in the, the chat, at, but on the stack. Uh, right. So does it does it actually mean that we're looking at like a stack-based buffer overflow, or is that just kind of a troll uh, on the name? Yeah, um, uh, not entirely sure. We have a menu here with three different options, four different options. There's like you can load a file. Uh, well, what else was there? And then uh, you can when you do that, there's like a file name. There's a call to fstat or lstat actually. Uh, so yeah. Uh, oh, that was interesting actually. Let's let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, so that that you said they it was fstat or lstat. But uh, if we look closely, let's let that come up again. Uh, so again, they're, they're moving so fast. But if we notice, um, there's a call to one of them, but the error message says the other. Right. And that's so uh, that, is, that is interesting. Interesting. This yes. is the kind of thing as like, you know, as of, uh, there we go. We're getting some Fs. Thank you. Nice. Chat. <laughs> Love to see it. There we go. So Fs in the chat, four Fs in the well, maybe yeah. maybe we do that once it once it gets solved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. One they, once they actually beat it. Right now, the challenge is standing tall. Yeah. Um, it's a great idea. I, and, and by the way, the reference there to DefCon CTF is canceled. DefCon is canceled. is very much a meme. If you've not been to DefCon before, every year there's a joke that it is canceled. Uh, uh, excellent. Glad to see live overflow in chat as well. Uh, looking forward to hi everybody on live uh, overflows Twitch stream. I know he's been watching all weekend long with us. Uh, I, even on the times where he wasn't uh, chatting with us uh, live. Right, so we've had him as a commentator, as one of our uh, three guest commentators. We yep. had uh, one person from Nautilus Institute, Lightning, here on site, and we had uh, Gamosa Labs and uh, Live Overflow uh, calling in remotely. It's been uh, really adding to the... To the in, in fact, we might want to, uh, if we can get the, the title below our names fixed, uh, we'll, we'll That's get that corrected. That's awesome, but Super in the meantime, minor, but, yeah. we can go to see Starbucks, you can see that they are uh, just dumping out etc password. So you can see here in the menu, they can load a file, they can print the loaded file, they can unload the last file, and they have an extremely convenient call RAX. Oh, uh, well, wow. that's a nice nice option. That, nice. Was, that was very handy of someone. Right. So I would assume this means that you want to control the value in RAX. Uh, we're looking at uh, reading of proc self mem, uh, proc self, so we're, we're looking at interactions Okay. Yeah, I thought I was freaked out for a second. I thought they had a shell instantly. Right, no, no, no. It, it, but it yeah. looked like you know they were looking at uh, proc self fd zero. So like yep. opening standard in as a file, you can do a bunch of uh, interesting things stuff with that. there. Yep. Uh, they were looking at proc self mem, also an interesting file. The whole proc uh, like pseudo file system is pretty interesting in a lot of these challenges. Yeah, absolutely, it comes in very handy. So yes, uh, the reference there. Every uh, um, is confirming defcon ctf the main ctf did end a little bit early. I don't know the full story, but we heard from the Nautilus Institute that um, there was uh, some, some issues that they had to close down one hour earlier than expected. So normally the intended end of the CTF this year was 2 p.m., uh, but they ended out slightly early, which means this is the only game left. This is the only points that people can be getting. Uh, and we've only got two teams that are in running. We've got Perfect Route and we've got Team Starbug. And uh, this 
could have – this definitely could change the destiny of Perfect Route in terms of making it into the top teams here. I don't, I don't think it's going to make them into first. Having seen the scoreboard right before it went dark, it probably wouldn't get them all the way there. Although it is worth noting, uh, there was actually uh, a, an incident earlier on. One of the things that happens a lot with um, – uh, with these kind of CTFs is you're really worried about like fair play and what's appropriate and inappropriate. And there was, unfortunately, one of the members of Perfect Group was fork bombing one of the other boxes. Maybe they weren't aware of kind of the CTF culture. And when their team caught it, they uh, they specifically like said, hey, we're sorry. One of our team members didn't know this was against the rules. Yeah. They were penalized a little bit for that. Between that penalty plus the amount that they could get by winning, if they win this, that would have maybe been enough to bring them all the way into first from that uh, fourth uh, position that they were in. Uh, but I think with that penalty, it will, they would probably end up somewhere in the, the, the second uh, place range, even if they win. So probably not going to upset the entire competition just as a result of this event. Um, but, but it's it, going to shuffle around It's going to change the standings, yeah. No matter what happens, in fact, even if it ends up being Team Starbuck, it's going to jump them way up in the board. Right. We should remember um, also that it's not only the winner who gets points. Like There is like a point distribution from, for all the teams in this tournament. And... Uh, as I said, like we'll probably not at this point change the winner, but it will shuffle around the standings. Uh, I want to go and look at Starbugs because I was seeing some interesting stuff there. They're trying to play around with the file system. Like, what interesting file could they be looking at? Um, I, if I remember correctly, like the intended solution involves like a sim link or something. Like you're supposed to open a sim link and then like close it to get some kind of un uninitialized memory or something like this is this uh i i know that, that yeah i've been i've i've heard that it is involved a sim link and that's the difference between that l stat and that f stat uh call so that's all ah, right link stat file stat uh that's i was actually gonna uh, ask about what the difference there uh, as i you know, did not remember this. So, so the intended there, I believe, is an fstat, which, if you call it on a sim link, will give you the file it's pointed at, the ultimate actual file. But if you use uh, lstat, you're going to get just the sim link information. Right, right. Right. So, that's I think the difference. Uh, and one of the changes again, we've talked a lot about how getting the difficulty right in, uh, on these can be can be an issue. Um, one of the things that we did during testing was realize, hey, let's make this a little bit more obvious that this is intended. And so that's why the error message that was in there just said before stat failed and now it says specifically f stat failed right but that was as you said that you know earlier when you saw the, the call that's not the function that's called right so hopefully it's a that's little enough. bit subtle but it it's is. a hint Ho it's, ho it's a hint that's kind of baked into the challenge hopefully it's sufficient and it gets them uh what they need uh we'll see i still love the name of that menu choice too extremely convenient call yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah it's a little tongue-in-cheek it's a little uh yes we've been like you know because we want to make these challenges like simple enough that you can solve it very within quickly. The time spin, yep. We have been like putting in like a bit artificial uh, gadgets and uh, aspects of the of the programs here to, to make them easier to actually exploit. So let's just see if we can get caught up and get a sense of where everybody's at. I don't know that anybody yet knows exactly what they're doing. I don't think so either. I haven't seen like I haven't seen any crashes. I haven't seen any like weird behavior yet. I think they're still like exploring the program, trying to figure out what's going on. You could see their exploit in the exploit script there. They're trying to like uh, you know start a build up that kind of like template we've yep. talked about before on the stream, like building abstractions around those like interactions in the program so that you can just easily uh, then put this these building blocks together into an exploit. Yeah and I will point out again these are the top players in what is already a collection of the top players in the world right, right. and so this uh i think with the one the lesson we found is that the further along we make it in this this competition the harder it is to see what they're doing because they move so quickly yeah. um, that we need the freeze frame we need to pause uh and one of the things i like lo yeah would love to do next year is actually bring them in for commentary afterwards have a little debrief session mm. but we kind of got to balance how much of the time we take up since right. we are going concurrently with the real event. But this is part of a competition. Yeah. It's a very prestigious competition. All the teams are here. They're really, really to want win. to win. Yep. Uh, they uh, get like you know the glory of winning this, the DEFCON CTF. They are awarded black badges, right? Eight for winning. black badges yes. for the winning team. Every, it is the only event that has that has gotten consistently eight black badges every year. Normal events get one, maybe mm. or yeah. maybe two, and so this is like the biggest pinnacle of all. And there are dozens or hundreds maybe even of competitions if you can all the little challenges all over the the event there are tons and tons of things here at defcon but this is the pinnacle and so we did our best to try to like integrate within the ctf but not uh not take too much away from it right, we, we've right. got the best people up here we're only here for a maximum of about four hours each 
Uh, and that's, you know, over the course of like a three-day event, I think the best, the best we could do. Yes. And uh, I mean, overall, the DEF CON CTF, like within the CTF community, it's like one of those, like, I would say top five or so uh, events of the, yeah. of the year. And it's certainly one of the most longest running CTS. For uh, sure, for sure. Con the consistency. Uh, it's probably like the, the, the best known or maybe the only known like outside of like the CTF community, like, you know. I have actually had people like recognize DEF CON CTF if I'm wearing like my, my leather jacket. So actually it's one of the other things is that if the winning team usually gets a leather jacket or at least they have in the past. I don't know if they still still do that, but you would get like these DEF CON branded leather jackets, which doesn't do me a lot of good in Florida, but you know, <laughs> occasionally I get a chance to wear it. Right. Um, so switching over to Starbucks again, we can see here that they're looking at S Maps, which I don't even know what that is. What the is that? self S Maps? Yes. I don't know either. Like maps will show you the memory mapping. Which is actually them. what Perfect Route is doing right now. They did just that in their script. They leaked out right. stuff maps. You can see there they're looking at like a whole bunch of uh, other mappings and stuff. So they're they're playing around with this. I maybe I don't know if they like looking for something specific or uh, just checking around a bit to see what they can find. I mean, certainly with that call RAX, right? Or uh, th that they're given um, extremely suspicious uh, menu option. Uh, it makes sense that they're, in their script they're gonna, they might want to um, understand the base addresses so that they can shift and adjust to an actual pointer where something is loaded. So For sure. combining those I think makes a lot of sense, but there's right. still... You need to break that down and then do into sub-goals. Like you know that the end goal is to control the value of this register, but... Like, where are you going to point it? Right, where are you going to point it and how do you get there? Yes, and I think they know where they're going to point it by reading the proxy stuff maps. I think they both kind of can, can figure that out. They can figure out the offsets. They can right. find this stuff. And I don't remember, is there a win function in this binary? I don't remember if we've seen that, um, if, if it exists. Does a win function exist in this binary? I'm asking our producer. Does a win function exist in this one? I don't know that it does, um, but we're going we're gonna to double check on we're that. We're going to have an answer on this very shortly. Uh, in the meantime, we can see that Perfect Root, they are... Yes, Perfect Root is still the same player. They have not swapped out. Okay, so there are... Uh, they're in the binary. There is not a traditional win function the way we've seen other ones where it's literally just a system of bin sh, which is that you could just call it and immediately get a shell with the way that we've, you know, th these challenges have standard input wired up to the network socket the teams are connecting to. But you can either hit one gadget or there's actually a component in the binary itself uh, that has a, a syscall available that's kind of intended as another potential target. Right. Um, and that's actually a good way to, to make it so that teams can um, it, that we can make sure the difficulty is intended to be a little lower. If there's only exactly one path through the binary, um, it, it, it decreases the odds that somebody's going to get to it in time. So having a couple of different sort of parallel paths is often a nice way to, uh, to make these accessible. So, okay, looking at, uh, sorry, we're looking at perfect, uh, perfect root. I almost said perfect blue, which again, uh, perfect one of root the is one of the components. Yeah, so again, yes, many of these perfect teams. Perfect blue and rudimentary are the components of this team. Yeah, and, and many of these teams are kind of combined here for DEF CON CTF. And I, some of them I expect will play together afterwards, and some of them um, will kind of split back up, uh, maybe only come together once a year just, just for this event. I think we'll see probably both of those. Yes. So... Uh, okay, now this is... So we're looking at the, the right. Yes. We have some... Uh, cheer in the chat is that uh, let's see if I can em make not embarrass myself is that like Korean script oh, that is that is Korean yes for sure uh, I thought you were gonna read it I was like oh you no, 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 but I've actually heard that, like, actually uh, learning to uh, read the, the Korean is actually Korean uh, is relatively simple. Yeah, the pronunciation right. is straightforward, and like, unlike you know uh, Chinese, for example. Yeah. I can I can read a little bit of it, but like, it, it's every character is its own word, so much harder. No, 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 yeah, yeah. I love how how much love our our contestants are getting. They are so handsome. Yes. They are so wonderful, <laughs> and I'm glad our chat appreciates that. We have some fantastic competitors. Right. Uh, on, on both sides. Uh, so actually, to answer your question in chat, um, I know we have um, Alex on uh, the Perfect Root side only because I saw a prompt earlier. So they've got their path, their username is Alex uh, in the virtual machine. I don't know if I've seen that for, uh, for Team Starbug. 
uh, the name of the player that, that, that they're sending. Right. Um, so. There we go. So we've got uh, the answers coming through. Oh, yeah, yeah, excellent. Liu Zhang fighting. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, also something when I learned when uh, playing CTFs in Korea, that you have the fighting. That this is like yeah. working hard. And there's like a post thing. Like, Ooh, uh, nice. I think it was like, you know, this. Ooh, um, you I know, know. Uh, I apologize for any like, you know, misremembrance of like how this uh, is supposed to be. But uh, back to the game. Let's go to um, Starbucks. You can see here that they have some kind of leak, I think, because the pwn tools output is switching to the uh, the hex uh, right. output, which it does when there are non uh, like ASCII. but yeah non ASCII characters in your debug log. So this is something I really like when uh, using pwn tools, like when you use the tubes library, turn on that like uh, debugging things. You can just see all the bytes being sent it's and really received handy. from it, and you can see that within like or prepended to that text. There is some, um, you know, seemingly random bytes, but you know, probably. Not. Well, oh, you can see the like seven maybe a pointer, zero, actually. Zero. That looks yeah. very much like a pointer. That might be a pointer. There are two pointers there, there actually. Yeah. Uh, so you can see that pattern with the zero f zero 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 zero. Um, looks. looks like the three upper bytes yep. of a address, typically either uh, probably a library uh, are going to be in that range. Yeah, like a, like a, uh, the libc or right. uh, something else. So, so thank you very much for chat. We appreciate the love. It, is, it has been exhausting. We are really excited to see these teams. We're also really excited to be done and rest our voices <laughs> oh, and yeah. just lay on the ground, I think, and be quiet for a oh, little bit. Just gonna, I'm just going to crash on the floor here. Just, right after, just yeah. like, yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, I mean, if you are here uh, in Vegas at DEF CON, uh, after like, you know, uh, Void Mercy, sorry. I didn't write. Void Mercy is the name. Yes, that makes a ton of sense. Oh, okay, nice. That's, that's, yes. that's the handle. There we go. Right. Uh, so if you are here at the event, you know, come come talk to us afterwards. Uh, tell us what you you know what you think about the event so far. Maybe if any have any wish, uh, add anything to the wish list for next year if we do this again. Um, let's yeah. let's come back and take a look at Perfect True because uh, their their payload now they've actually been using that um, uh, the abilities to send things into. Uh, uh, no, where'd it go? It went away. So they had, oh, the alloc allocate chunk right there. So yeah. by, by doing a load file from uh, standard inputs and then sending some data, they're able to allocate chunks of different sizes. So they, they are looking into ways to control the heap allocations mm. by using that standard input as a file read and then just sending an arbitrary amount of data to fill up that buffer. So that's a really clever way to get exact sized allocations. And uh, we'll see uh, if they are going to need that uh, for their for their exploit. I still don't. I don't see anyone who has actually found the uh, the vulnerability itself. We're about uh, 15 minutes in now, and uh, yeah, just Dennis standard in right. You don't even need to do the, the the other version of it. But I'm still waiting to see somebody demonstrate knowledge of the actual flaw itself. I mean. They could be in their head, but I'm right, not seeing yeah. any any scripts. I yet. do like this uh, the leak that we're seeing here. I, I'm I'm pretty sure this is some kind of memory leak. It sure, yeah, it sure yes. looks like it. Uh, and it's written here. Lib, they, you're calculating the libc base by taking the leak and subtracting and offset the classic yep. uh, part of your uh, exploit, right? Um, so there's definitely some progress there. Um, I'm not sure if that will take them all the way. So. So we're saying that like one possible solution here is to leak a libc address, get your libc base, somehow control the register, REX register, and that's, then go for that's the one the bug, though, right? That's we're still looking for somebody to find that bug. Right. How do they get that racks control? Once they have that, I think that the rest of the components are pretty straightforward. So, so that's what we're looking to see, and we've got plenty of time. The good news is this. Final round can also, much like the last semifinal round, which was able to go a little bit longer uh, before we went to the sudden death, um, we do have a good hour and a half, uh, I think, before we are going to have to switch over to a sudden death. Uh, but we do have still have a hard limit. Yes. So if we're not able to solve it, we will switch to one of our, our sudden deaths. And as you noticed uh, in the last round, our sudden deaths have gotten real fast. We made sure that our sudden deaths are just very, very oh, quick. Oh, that one was like, was it, it was like under five minutes. And the, the it, was, it was pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so... Um, in, in terms of uh, both teams being Korean-based, actually, I think we have a mixed mixture. Uh, Perfect Root uh, has a couple of different 
uh, groups that have come together, I know. Right. Um, but I, I do think uh, Starbuck may be pr predominantly uh, a c Korean. Right, and Perfect Root, I think, is mostly U.S.-based, but... Uh, Students who may have come over or right. were, yeah, may have been uh, from a variety of places. They have, I think, uh, friends from uh, crafted different... I know that Perfect Blue is uh, like an, a U.S.-based At one team, it was a college team, right? Where there, right? A lot of them were still in college. I think many of them are graduated and, and are now in industry, but they, yeah. they kind of met and started there. Yes. Um, so... All right, let's, we're still, see, I, it, this is surprising to me, is I wonder, are they, I feel like this is a lot of work on both teams, and yet, almost just stepping back and looking and saying, where's the bug, right? Because I, I, I don't see anybody who's found the bug yet, and I feel like all this work that they're doing, it's a lot of motion, but not a lot of destination yet. And so I, I kind of want to see somebody, like, just stop and just spend some time really marking this up in a de uh, decompiler, really looking at... Yes, although if I did not did see we that, a see a stack smashing detector there, right? Then maybe they, we do know the uh, the bug on Starbug's side. But that's interesting uh, because. So what is this script oh, oh, doing? Oh, 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 that was a, that was a, that was a shell, I think. What, or was it? Yeah. <laughs> so copying into the VM. This is what we've seen before. Copying it out of the VM and going to throw it on against the tenth service. Say, oh, it's not working remotely. Oh my god. Oh my okay, God, can, so we're very we close. Can see the, we can hear the frustration. Yeah, yeah you can. <laughs> and it's, the teammates are behind. Yeah, uh, they're sharing out. The, the emotions, the emotions. As long are as they're not telling advice. Yeah, that's yeah. the other side. But as long as they're not giving any hints, they can, you know, they can show all, all the emotions. Is, yeah, is exactly uh, encouraged. Oh, they're trying to figure it out. It's so, um, yeah. So I would love to see. Take a look at that that exploit the next time it comes up. And I'm I'm very curious. What are we? Are we seeing that? Like they're uh, trying to run it remote. Oh, they have. That's a. That's it. They're running it. It's is this it? Is this oh, it? They double oh, they're double checking it. Yes. Oh. Team two. Team two. Team two. Oh, that's, that's it. We have a winner. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Very so well much. done. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> All so. right. That was amazing. Let's go ahead and just step back. Congratulations to Team Starbug. Starbug was the winning team. So right. well done. Made it through all four rounds of live CTF this whole weekend. I, the amount of stress, it was stressful for us yeah. just watching. I cannot imagine how much effort and energy these teams have just been exhausting themselves. It is so hard to sit up here in a room full of people staring over your shoulder. Yeah, it's the, the pressure is crushing. It is, it is amazing. Yeah. So chat, thank you very much. You guys hung out with us this all, all weekend. Uh, look forward, I can't wait to see a lot of people figuring out afterwards they're gonna freeze frame in slow-mo and we're gonna get a much more information about uh, the right. different approaches and how things worked. I think uh, Live Overflow is still running his recap stream. Uh, you know, you want to head over there after this and uh, we'll keep keep an eye out for the challenges because we are also going to be releasing all of these challenges yes. uh, to to the public. We'll put out a GitHub repo with both source code and the exact binaries that teams right. uh, were given. Probably put the some events. information on the website there. Yep. A link to the different things, the YouTube channel, the GitHub repo. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at that bracket one last time and yes. pull that up and we'll show what uh, what we did this, this last several days, right? So we had teams coming from the round of 16 all the way up to this final event. What a great showing. That was super fun. We want to also thank a big thanks to everyone who helped out uh, making this possible. So we had uh, us and uh, Glenn here uh, on site in Vegas for do, for this, and you have multiple people uh, off site as well. Thanks we to had Josh for all the challenges. Thanks to Nick for uh, a challenge. Thanks to Rusty for a bunch of work on challenges. Uh, thanks to uh, Brumley for bringing us food because we had several meals brought to us here that was like super super helpful. So nice. So this was this was a blast. And then we had uh, live overflow on uh, commentary. Yep. We had Brandon Falk and Gamosa Labs uh, on uh, commentary also as well. Also as I guess commentator and Lightning, of course, from, from Nautilus the, Institute. Yeah, and speaking of, big thanks to Nautilus Institute for, uh, yeah. Bringing <laughs> us out in the first place. Right. Yeah. We really appreciate that. So good job uh, to Starbugs uh, for winning. Fantastic. All right, we are uh, going to pack it in. I think that's about it for the stream for now. Yeah. We look forward to coming back. Live CTF is not going away forever. Uh, we would love to come back again for DEF CON CTF next year. But if you're actually interested in live CTF coming to uh, another CTF, we're, like, we want other people to be doing this as well, too. We think just the idea of showing what teams are doing and talking about it and being able to make it a little bit more accessible is, uh, is super fun. And so we're looking forward to that, that happening. Right. So, yeah, that's going to be it for us. Uh, I've been Carl, Cita2. 
Jordan. I've been Cypherdex, and we will see you next time. Bye. Take care.